Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Bros Podcast. I'm your host Levi alongside TJ and Chad. What the and fuck is up? Hey, hey guys. Long time. Happy 2019. Don't drink it yet. Don't drink it yet? We ain't even told what it is. Oh, well, that doesn't matter if I drink it or not. Why, <laughs> why, do, why do y'all got to know what it is for me to drink it? Well, the, That's the best the way for me to know what to it hear is. The cheers, man. Yeah. Oh. You forgot how we do this. So well, we, we hadn't it. released an episode in a while, and uh, but we're, we're kicking it back off in 2019, and we are uh, dedicated to do t- at least, at, li- at a minimum of 12 episodes this year. Once a month. Are we dedicated? Is that going to I mean, I'm, I'm pretty damn dedicated. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm doing all right right now. You go take her one at we'll a time. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about showing up for this one. Yeah. Well, yeah. you made it, so yeah. I'm, I'm happy well, with you. On um, that. Well, Chad, if I tell you that there's whiskey at every event, that's gonna help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's okay. definitely gonna help me being here for sure. All right. So uh, today we have uh, some whiskey. It's uh, TX, or I'm assuming it's Texas because uh, it's from Texas. It says blended whiskey, 41% alcohol, otherwise 82 proof, from a company called Firestone and Robertson. Uh, don't know a whole lot about it. The bottle looks fairly cool. It's got like a little canvas thing around the neck. And uh, you bought it in Chattanooga, didn't bottle. you? Uh, yes, actually did. And I did buy it while I was down in Chattanooga. So I mean, but uh, yeah, it's got like a little thing in cursive. It's a little too fancy for me to even want to try to read. So uh, well, let's just let's yeah, just try it. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, the people in Texas Cheers, even boys. know anything about Cheers about whiskey? Well, we know Colorado didn't. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> they definitely did. That is Thanks that you. is different. It, it's sweeter. Yeah, it is. It's I, very I taste, sweet. I taste vanilla a little yeah, bit. Yeah, is that what it is? I'm going to try to read what's in cursive here. Okay. It, it's good, though. Like, it, to, to me, this is kind of like a, like a uh, you know. I don't hate it. No, I like it. It's sweet. I, I definitely don't. It's better than anything that we had in Colorado. For sure. For sure. And you're right. I, it's like a lot of vanilla in there. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Good. It yeah. kind of reminds uh, me a little bit of that. Uh, honestly, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Conor McGregor's Proper 12. Hmm. It, is, it is kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, kind of a sweet. Like that'd be good with some Coke for sure. Like especially if you like like a vanilla Coke, you know, oh, kind of thing, yeah, which dude. I do like that occasionally. Dude, I, I'll tell you, I had some of the uh, Jack Daniels Fire, and I mixed that with like a um, like a I don't know what did I mix it with like a Coke or something, and it tasted like it was really good with Coke. Yeah, we we had some of that uh, on New Year's. And I didn't think it would be that good. It's with Coke. so much better than Fireball. Right. Like it's amazing right. how much better that shit is. Than kind Fireball. of the same thing, just way better. You're talking yeah. about not reading the cursive. Uh, you, you guys ever get like cards from from like old people that still write in cursive? Oh yeah, and I hate it. I yeah. hate I hate yeah. cursive, dude. I cannot read. I legitimately have difficulty reading cursive. Like I feel like an, a stupid person when I get a cursive. Well, I can definitely note. read it, but I have to like I have to slow down and read like like a child i mean i have to like really slow down and kind of go through each word well, yeah it, to me it kills me like when i see someone at work or somewhere else and literally they write all their notes in cursive i'm like you go back and you read your own cursive handwriting and you're able to legibly it's, read it it's kind of nice though because it's kind of like they're like if you can't read it they're kind of like leaving a secret message the only they can read which i guess but I, I think now though they don't they don't do cursive in school no, they don't. like they used to right not like they used to they Wait. still teach it but my uh it's very it was my, my second when grader we did it. my second grader is doing it right now she had a folder that had some practice with it i'm like what the well you should I'm learn thinking, what the fuck are you doing this for well because you should have to learn how to read it and you need to know how to sign your name and things is, like that is but, it just like you know brief so you can at least know how to do a signature i guess i I don't. We had to spend several years doing it when I, when we were in school. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I remember my, writing which was, an essay, which was it. bullshit because they spend like two years teaching you how to write and how to spell, and then they go, "Yeah, now you can't do any of that anymore." Well, the spelling's the same, but I mean, as far as writing, like you had to write all brand new again. I Why? have For I what have reason? a thirteen year old, and she didn't spend a ton of time on it, but but definitely uh, some time on it. So it's I, still... I think they need to stop that, and I think that they need to. I think that they honestly, what would benefit them is reteach handwriting all over again because at a certain point, I feel like my my print got terribly bad, like taking notes in like high school, and I was like, well, it probably would have stood me some good to at least practice my letters yeah. again. But in handwriting, like it's supposed to become your own at some point, anyways, right? right. Where like right. the rules are kind of like, all right, this is kind of like the I, way I mean, you do I it. Get, I guess like, so. you you but, absolutely have better handwriting than either of us uh, well, oh, man. That, on that, this that, side that, of the table. That's because I made a sudden change to if you notice in my handbook here, write everything in all cursive letters. Because uh, the, uh, I mean, not cursive, but uh, capital letters. It's you have all caps, everything. Yeah, see it. All just like all caps. larger and smaller. Nope. 
It was uniform all the way across. I didn't know you did that. Well, and the reason I started doing that was you it's just more it looks really good. Yeah, it looks well, good. Re- it, lo- I- it looks like one of those like fonts you download to make it look like you know <laughs> yeah. that you're like that you have good like, handwriting. Like, yeah, like let's make it look like handwriting, but it looks like really good though. It looks it looks not I, not like a person just did it. I have this font on my computer. I, t- I took the little, <laughs> Do you really? I took the little sheet, wrote it out, scanned it. Oh, did that you made thing? your own font? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool, man. And so I can literally type something. It looks like I just wrote it. Now, cool. I, I, if you if you paid me, if you were going to pay me a million dollars and ask me to be able to write every letter in cursive, I, I would not win that million dollars because I cannot write certain letters in cursive. I could not tell you how to write a Z in cursive right now. I know how to do the If you paid me, if you yeah, offered a yeah, million could dollars, it. I couldn't do it right I now. I can do it. It's like a, a it's Z a is like an N, but with a little, like a like a thing down beneath it, right? I th- No, I thought it was like a big ass two. <laughs> Uh, capital Z. No, capital, capital Z. Z is like a big, basically a Z. Uh, uh, the uh, lowercase. Shit, I, I usually have a pen on me, but I don't have it right now. But the uh, um, uh, there's the, one right the, here. the lowercase, it looks like, almost like a three because it's like that. That's a lowercase. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, it's like an N because that's the N that I was talking about. Right, and yes. then it goes down, Sorry. does it? I still, I know all now, this shit. Now, so, the, yeah, the, ca- the capital I thought was like this. You're right. The capital is. It, it looks like a two. Yeah. It just yeah, that's funky. it. I don't like it, but I feel like we're picking up a ton of like background noise. Like everything that touches the table is like picking up. Yeah, like that. Y'all hearing that? It's just well, the steel on steel, probably. But I mean, you know. Yeah, we, we're trying out these microphone stands on a table oh, we don't, we don't typically do it on. So yeah, it's so. probably because it's too light of a table. It's probably well, echoing through. Well, honestly, so hopefully it's yeah. not. Hey, no, it's not too bad. I, I honestly don't. Hopefully, hopefully it don't come. We just don't bang bad. shit down like I just did. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? I don't, I'm probably going to get like real excited about something You're gonna later. You're going to get excited about something, I'm just going to slam down the glass. What are you going to get excited about? There's no telling. Um, did you guys – Did you up. guys uh, know – I know I know. we usually talk about UFC a little bit. Did you uh, Did you see that TJ Dillashaw made weight today? Yeah. That's a big deal, man. That. So, um, so I don't even know who who's he fighting. Cejudo. S- Henry, Henry Cejudo. So, Cejudo. Yeah. Sorry. So Henry Cejudo is a an Olympic gold medal winner for wrestling. He's that that good. Like Daniel Cormier is good, but Daniel Cormier is not a gold medal winner. Yeah, um, nationally recognized. This guy beat Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse. Oh, okay. Ended his reign of you know like okay. thirteen wins in a row or fourteen wins in a row, something like that. Yeah. And T.J. Dillashaw did what most people don't do. He's going down a weight class to challenge. Uh, he's the 135 pound champion. And he's going down to challenge a 125 pound champion. Yeah, actually, read most a, people go up to challenge. Goodness, can I, you? I read, I read a story on it because they were talking about uh, Dillashaw that had an article on ESPN. I don't know if you got a chance to check out, but it talked about how he cut 29 pounds to make weight for the fight. Oh yeah, because because he was a lean 135. Yeah, he weighed yeah. in at 124 point six or something like that. Like he weighed in no, less how, than 125. How tall is he though? I mean, when you're weighing like one, five, uh, seven, five, eight, I think. Yeah, I something believe like so. that. Because I'm just thinking, like, for me to weigh one twenty-five, I mean, I think I would have to be like on death's door to weigh yeah. that. To weigh now, that. Now, I'll tell you, seeing him weigh in is, I love T.J. Dillashaw. He's one of my favorites. He, I think he's was the, in in those two Car- Cody Garbrandt fights, he might have been the best pound for pound fighter in the whole in the whole uh, UFC. But seeing him at 125 pounds scares me a little bit. I'm afraid he lost power. He said he in this camp had a new personal best, like clean and jerk, and like all these uh, all these measures that he measures strength and explosiveness by. So he says he hasn't lost a bit on explosiveness, but he just looks so much smaller. I don't know how you can not. I mean, you think if you're going from 135 to 125, you're losing what? What would that be? Like, oh, he's five seven. Yeah, we just confirmed he's five seven. Um, but I mean, I don't know what the math is there, but you're. You're losing like what eight percent or whatever of your weight. I mean, that's 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 a lot. Like, that's it, a fucking it, ton of weight, man. I mean, crazy. that's he he. Claims, I mean, it's not like he's losing fat. I mean, that's yeah. He's had I mean, to, muscles he's had all he's got to lose. Too, yeah. You know, because he was pretty lean before. Yeah. Um. But and Henry Cejudo's accustomed to fighting at that weight class, so that's what scares me. Yep. But. It's well, what makes it exciting yeah. also. Uh, the thing the, I tend to worry about when someone drops that kind of weight is just your energy level dropping down. Yeah. Because, I mean, you pull a lot of your energy from, like, fat reserves and just, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like you can go longer when you right. got a little bit of meat on you versus, like, when you're real thin. I mean, it's just like, I don't know. You just get winded a little bit easier yeah. if you're too lean. But he's got that Dwayne yeah. Bang Ludwig training camp. He's he's a fucking That, that is what's funny about fighting, though. When you see the guys that are like, like – um, 
you would not consider to have a fighting body. Um, like who's the uh, Roy Nelson or Cormier? Oh, God. Roy Nelson's the worst. Right, but I mean, I'm or saying even like, Cormier, you yeah. didn't really see Roy Nelson like gassed out though. Yeah, I mean, right? he pretty well was like you know, and you think like the fat guy is going to be the guy that gasses out. Yeah, Roy Nelson was. Uh, would, I mean, he could take a punch too, dude. Yeah. That's well, good. That, that beard, that beard sucked it all up. Yeah. That beard just like they, the fist would come in, and that beard would just suck it all up. Like I don't a know. Big, I, like a big air bag. I think the reason why someone like Roy Nelson didn't get like winded too much. I mean, he's pretty much standing flat footed, just kind of you know uh, moving his head and his upper body. Versus yeah. like some of these lightweight guys, man, they dancing. True, I mean, but yeah. I mean, I mean, a Roy one Roy Nelson punch. I mean, that's got to be a decent amount of calories, right? <gasps> oh, dude, his right? punches like, are like powerful. one punch. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mullet power. TJ Dillashaw, though, what's so exciting about him is, is his movement and, and, you know, and just how well rounded he mm-hmm. can kind of beat you everywhere. So yeah. I think uh, he's a very balanced fighter. Chael Sonnen said that Henry Cejudo is by far the best wrestler in the UFC, but that TJ Dillashaw is the best MMA wrestler, is how he describes it. He says there's a difference in that kind of wrestling. Yeah, you were pure for sure. wrestling, for sure. Nobody's touching Cejudo, he said. But if it's MMA wrestling, TJ Dillashaw is the best. So, I mean, that might nullify each other. It might be a striking game. Could In which be. case, I give the edge to TJ. Well, too, and I wonder uh, from a pure wrestling standpoint, like the gloves that they have to wear. I know it's not super restrictive, but it's got to, you know, hinder, you know, some of the stuff that Cejudo would typically do in a regular wrestling match, you know, like yeah. at Olympic level. Because, I mean, I just think you're using your hands a lot. Right. Yeah. right. Do you guys ever watch uh, sumo wrestling? No, but I, not. I've only seen like uh, guys on like YouTube, cha- uh, YouTube channel yeah. videos or whatever. Because I remember like uh, Rhett and Link on a good mythical morning brought in a guy and really yeah they used him to uh, bust open like a like threw stuff on the ground and had him like do a belly flop on it and stuff like that similar wrestling is basically the same rules as regular wrestling right except you can push them out of the ring and win Ah, they don't they don't really spend much time getting down on the ground they're mostly stand up and leverage it's mostly like push me out of this ring but if you fall down (laughs) don't you lose though in similar wrestling yeah but in regular wrestling you'll stay on the ground and kind of like try to get a pin they don't really do that in sumo there's no pin in in similar wrestling it's either trying to Get them out of the circle or on it's, the ground. It's king, right. Yeah, it's king of the hill. Right. I mean, it's just pushing them off. Exactly. And, I know. And I watched I, some of it. I, I like they I'm, always they always wrap them up and grab that diaper. Wedgie. Thing. Yeah, they. And it's like a wedgie. To, it's a wedgie competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what they did. Wedgie competition. It is, man. I mean, they're, they. Well, hey, I actually was thinking about sumo wrestlers the other day because, uh, like, I remember hearing like. <laughs> Like no, it's weird because I guess my brain was just yes. like going through the motions. So but, glad I brought this up so but, I could hear this. But um, I always heard that some of the wrestlers got as big as they was not because like they they ate like shit, like they were actually pretty good athletes. But what they would do is they would like starve themselves for a long time and put themselves in like some kind of a like survival mode, and then they would like eat a bunch of shit, and then that would like I heard like that blow too. them up. Mm-hmm. But like, isn't that kind of bullshit now? Like that's that's not right. Right, yeah. like from what we know about like nutrition, that that's not how a, nutrition well, works. Well, is it? That, that might be a myth. That, that, or do you got to starve yourself for more than <laughs> like a day? Do you got to starve yourself well, for like several days for that, this to? But then gorging, gorging, I don't know. But yeah, like it's got to be and, what they gorge well, on. Intermittent though, right? fasting would be good for you, is what you're kind of you're getting at, right? But well, see now that, but there's like two different. I mean, there's I feel like the whole weight loss thing in general is such a you know it, it changes at the whim. Uh, uh, you know, all the time because I feel like you know people talking. Well, yeah, fasting is really good. You should fast at night. No, you should well, fast in the morning. They're learning more breakfast. Now. The the problem and, is with you know, a lot of our weight loss stuff that we've always heard was not by scientists. We're by people that were trying to sell you shit. Right. Right. Now we're in the age of the internet, and we know we're starting to learn like what's real. It's right. like breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Like that shit was like uh, patented by Kellogg's. Yeah, like that didn't have that didn't like. There's no science to back that up whatsoever. So, uh, but that's what got me on like the sumo wrestling thing because, um, uh, I was like not feeling well, like after, uh, at the beginning of the year, cause I was sick and like, I didn't, I mean, I didn't eat like for, uh, almost two days. It was a day and a half. And then I ate and I'm like, dude, am I going to like get like fat as shit now? Because I did this. And I started thinking about sumo wrestlers, like, isn't this how they do it? But I don't, it, it, like you brought up intermittent fasting. I don't think intermittent fasting is enough to put you in any kind of like survival mode. I mean, shit. A hundred years ago, that was just life. That yeah, was true, every every true. day. Every day was intermittent fasting. That's a good point. That's so, a good point. I don't know. I'm just wondering if if y'all knew like what they did, what their diet was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. That's a really good question. I've always heard that too. Exactly what you said, and uh, and I kind of think it just might be an urban legend altogether. Yeah, well, because it's like eating before bed. Eating before bed makes you well. That's bullshit too. We know that now. Like it's yeah. like. like 
it's, it's not eating before bed. It more has to do with, I mean. Well, your calories are your calories. Yeah. Right. I, if you I take in calories. just what you eat. That I, I think it's easier to eat before bed because, like, when well, you're not doing anything. You're just sitting there right. and you're eating. Well, I've always heard that. I mean, and maybe this is just kind of a bullshit thing, too, but. I've always heard that, like, if uh, your body's sleep deprived or you're tired, your body tends to crave sugar because it's like, "Hey, feed me! I'm starting to crash. I'm starting to fall asleep. I need something to keep me going." So, because you're sleep deprived or you're tired, your mind's telling you go eat something. I'll definitely eat more if I'm uh, if I'm like that. I just want to drink whiskey. When like, I if I'm hungover though, if I'm hungover, dude, I'm eating the shittiest foods. Yeah, when you're hungover, like it's something about like a. Like a Wendy's cheeseburger or Dude. something, something yeah. you about need a gr- something greasy. On I that tell stomach. you, one of the best meals I ever ate. I was, man, I I was probably twenty two. I was I was at that time where I was like barely like I was old enough to like go out and like like drink, and I went out and got hammered, and I was like hungover shit the next day, and a girl I was dating at the time she comes in and brings me a uh, the Sonic. Um, what was that chicken sandwich from Sonic that had like it was like a chicken sandwich on toast and had an onion ring and stuff on it? Oh, um, it's the some club toaster or whatever. Yeah, 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 that was it. That is one of my favorite meals I've ever ate in life. Like something about like getting that in on like a hangover and not having to even go get it myself, <laughs> having somebody bring it to me. Oh, that does make it better. Oh my goodness, yeah, it, and it just like I, I went from like feeling like shit to feeling a little, like yeah I can eat to going like back to being a hundred percent. And what is it about greasy ass food? Like that's why Waffle House is so fucking delicious when you're hungover too. Yeah, I know, and it's and I mean you can it's still delicious even if you're just getting eggs oh, yeah. and bacon. Yeah. yeah, I know it. I know yeah, it's but not it, just it takes food. it to that next level though. It does. Um, I, I so, why does Waffle House set so much heavier on you than like when you cook eggs and bacon at home? I don't well, know, it's, man. It's, it's gotta be it's like eggs some and of the, bacon. Like how how do they do eggs and bacon different than anybody else does? I gotta be bacon. dripping like greasy uh, Waffle House worker grease onto it or something no, off their head. I think, that's what it is. I, I think it's their grill. Like like you know, you it's just, a griddle. Like it's well, a big a grill, ass but, griddle. But I'm just saying, like all the grease that's been saturated and baking on that thing all day long. I mean, they clean it periodically, but how well are they cleaning it? Like seriously, they're scraping the middle off just well, enough to get the Well, hopefully not that good because go. when I cook when I cook breakfast on on bacon like our griddle, yeah. yeah, I cook bacon and I kind of give her a good few little scrapes Dabs, and now yeah. start putting the eggs on it it's and you good. see all them uh, little black yeah. things and the eggs and you know that's where all the good is. That's where yeah. the good is. That's where yeah. the vitamins are, son. Yeah, that's right. That's well, where the. We, well, while we're talking about health and uh, and the food and all the other kind of stuff, like TJ, I know you're real big on avocados. I don't know where you stand <laughs> on it. Uh, avocado, I like I like avocados, but I can't eat them just like by themselves, like a lot of people can. Like my my youngest daughter can can eat an avocado. Well, she could eat it like an apple if we would serve really? it to her that. What way. do you What do you mean not by itself? What do you like? I got to put it like on something on some in toast something. Or something or? I never had it on toast. Oh, dude. Get but some like, buttery toast and put some damn avocado. Like on avocado. That shit, son? Like well, like I had a I had a burger that had avocado on it, and I thought oh, okay. it was delicious. Okay, but I mean, just like putting avocado on a cracker, like eh, that's yeah. Not... Uh, see, I'm kind of like I'm I'm at where you're at. I'm kind of lukewarm on it. Like, it's the it's, texture. It's, it's so the texture. pasty. It's, it's, like it's soft. It's it, and that's kind of it's almost you like, feel like you're eating something that's bad. Like something that's gone like, bad. Yeah, yeah. something that yeah. should be thrown so in I'll the trash. I'll tell you what, what we do typically with our. So in the in you know I eat eggs and bacon. Uh, if I'm home m- most mornings, I'm gonna eat eggs and bacon. You morning people and uh, <laughs> and I'll have uh, uh, my wife and I will cut an avocado in half, and she gets the one half and I get the other half, and that's like the bowl. The avocado shell is the bowl. We'll just put salt and pepper on top and spoon that shit out of there. God damn, it's good. No, I can't do that. See, Come on, know. put it's, some pepper yeah. on that. Have no. you tried it with pepper? It's, well, a, it's I, not I, about the taste. It's, it's about the texture. The texture. Yeah. Well, I, I want to yeah. rattle your brain It just needs it a little bit. Oh, shit. I, I have, didn't know I, you were going like butter with this. I have, I have an interesting fact about the avocado. Are you going to Are you gonna ruin avocados for me? Maybe. God damn, um, you so, leave that. So avocados, um, the, the word avocado is a Mexican-Spanish... Uh, a derivative word. I'm still good with it. And um, so it has a, a, like an Aztec. Nope, Marty out. And, 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 so it has a, has a, so inherently. <laughs> so it's the guy Mex- that goes to a Mexican from, restaurant. From, from, from the Mexican heritage, it actually sources back to an Aztec word um, that I can't pronounce, but the word avocado uh, in the Aztec translated backwards to the Aztec uh, language means testicle. And the Spanish word mole, mole is a sauce yeah, that yeah, they use I know in Spanish. Mole. It's delicious. So uh, the word guacamole actually means testicle sauce. So if you talk to an Aztec uh, Indian person or whatever That's they're funny. called, 
you if you told them today that hey i'm eating guacamole they would look at you very strangely like they would, uh, they would think it was semen and, yeah yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah, they, like, exactly. But, but how do we know they didn't think it was awesome like it's like yeah, like, oh, like well, so yeah, yeah this is what well, makes yeah, you so, fertile yeah. so, like, so I, pull, I pulled up the reason why i was given that name was because <laughs> avocados in and of themselves uh resemble testicles yeah you know what looks more like a testicle though a kiwi fruit to me yeah well, because they got the fuzz on the them. Fuzz. Yeah, I think it's that. Because it reminds me but, of me when see, I'm like, a, like, it, like, like about a week out after a shave, and uh, <laughs> if your if your testicle has a five o'clock shadow like that, I mean that you got. Some... I, but I'll tell you what makes it makes it worse is I eat the skin on the uh, kiwi, so I just bite into it what like an the apple. Fuck! What kind of savage are you? No, that, Jesus. So what happened was I was I've never even considered doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I love the taste of kiwi. But yeah. I'm really annoyed by the work it takes to remove the skin. Like, it, it kind of sucks taking the skin off a kiwi. Yeah, okay. So I read somewhere, internet, in the... It, I think, actually, it was in the produce section where it tells you uh, how to prepare stuff. It would be like little signs on the produce. Yeah. And it said the skin was edible. I was like... Well, everything is edible if you got... Well, but like if they say it, you don't see me turning up a pineapple the same way. Yeah, you don't see me chugging a a quart of motor oil. (laughs) (laughs) They wouldn't say that was edible. It can be. You physically can, but it would. It's organic. So I. uh, So then the next one I bit into, and like it doesn't detract from the taste in any way, shape, or form. But the only thing is weird is that first bite when you feel that peach fuzz kind of touching your your mouth. (laughs) Yeah. It makes you feel a little homo. It makes you feel a little homo. I feel like it makes you feel a lot homo. I, like, I'm I, trying to even figure out, like, yeah. what... Like, you th- do you think you're, like, biting into, like, a man's nutsack? Or do you, like... Well, I don't, I don't think that. I just... I think you think that. I, I, TJ, I want you to take this same principle in theory. I bite it and, all slow. I just, and I kind of lick on it a couple times first. I want, I want you to take that same... <laughs> Before you bite it? <laughs> of course. Because you don't want to surprise the kiwi. I don't want to... I don't wanna... <laughs> No, you don't want to, you man. don't want the kiwi to be too sensitive, right? Yeah. I, wanna... I, I want you to now, since you've done that with what the kiwi, got? go to the banana and eat it with a peel. Nah, and all. dude, nah, fuck that. I don't need a banana in front of another man. <laughs> it's edible. <laughs> it's edible, it's motherfucker. A... Oh, you talking about the peel? Yeah, yeah. the banana peel. It's I thought edible. you were just talking about eating bananas in general. No. I won't. I will not eat a banana in front of another man. I, 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 I well, ne- you know how you do it. You just what? break Why? it off and then eat it. Because I don't want piece. them to get you're some kind of idea when I when I put a banana in my mouth. I don't want to get an idea. There was a hilarious video of this dude. Who was like obviously working the office? You see that? Yeah, he's and he, was, he was breaking. No, 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 no. He was breaking it off. Like he kept, he was like in his cubicle, and he would like look around like to either side and like see if anybody was watching. And he would break a, some of it off, and then he would like do it like if you had like a handful of peanuts or nuts. Oh, shaking it. So like yeah, he would shake it, like put one in. Like yeah, sunflower seeds or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, sunflower <laughs> seeds. Nah, I'll eat a banana in front of y'all when we're down here tonight. If y'all want yeah, to. you will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have me a fresh glass of whiskey. I'm gonna now, watch you eat that banana. But I, but I want you and I want you to eat the pill too, because it's edible. <laughs> you ever heard those prisoners uh, smoke banana peels? Smoke banana peels. So we watch a lot of prison. Is shows this like here. smoking meat or smoking cigarettes? Like sm- like they'll do it like they're supposed to try to get high off of it. What? But I read about it. You know, they don't get shit. It was kind of like a urban legend, but they'll smoke it because they're just desperate to smoke anything in jail. <laughs> I guess it's just maybe the lung feel. I guess you know smoking. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, if you watch enough of them jail shows, that's how you know like our prison system is fucked. Because you'll see dudes like create like the craziest shit out of like toilet paper and uh, water ma- and some like and yeah and like some magazines and devil oh, like no dude, this guy's skills should be yeah. like yeah MacGyver esque. No, what I'm what I'm always blown away by with that stuff is just how amazing the human race is. You lock us up, we'll figure out some shit, son. Yeah. We're in, I mean, yeah, we're you genius. Think, you think you you throw somebody like an unlimited supply of toilet paper, toothpaste, like some other shit, and lock him in a room with it, he's going to figure out how to make some it's shit amazing. out of it. The fact that they can communicate with those kites and everything that they'll pass from cell to cell, yeah. with these elaborate little like passing ways... Yeah. I mean that's a level of boredom that they'll I, light that, cigarettes with a with a wall like a uh, outlet. They'll put they'll hide two wires. They'll find they'll pull them out of some shit. Then they'll hide them somewhere. And then when they need a light a cigarette, they'll put the two in the in the wall plug until it sparks on a to- piece of toilet paper that they wrap around it and catches that on fire. And then they'll light their cigarette. Now I'm calling with it. bullshit. That's not how electricity works. Uh, fuck, I don't. It know. would trip the breaker. I don't know. I'm telling you, you that I watched the show and the guy said that's how they They would have to. They would have to come up. They would have to create some kind of like heating element, like inside of your oven or something, something that could get hot but not 
but wouldn't transfer enough energy through to trip the breaker no. to whatever outlet. Is well, there. I don't know how it well, works. I'm telling now, you, that's now, what these the prison said. shows are bullshit. Now, We've already figured it out. I, well, Chad, I, you tell me if this one's <laughs> bullshit. Wrong. I, I have seen I where mean, someone will take it like a double A battery and they'll take the tin foil off of uh, like a piece of gum or something like that and they'll take it to the bottom and then connect it to the top. Yeah, it's going to get and, really hot. Yeah, and then start a fire that way. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Okay. Yeah, it's going to get really hot. But the thing is, you, I mean, this guy, thing, this things this is going to get really hot. How they, the, how he lit his cigarettes, and, and he showed the outlet. It was all black, like they'd been, like they'd been causing sparks. Well, of I mean, it. he has to create resistance somehow. Yeah. Enough resist. Like if you plug in like whatever a hair dryer or anything, there's yeah. enough resistance in there, but so it doesn't get hot. Yeah. You well, there's a saying? TV plugged in that same outlet, too. You think maybe somehow they did it with that? I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I would be really interested to figure <laughs> out, like, what they were actually doing. But, like, see, like a battery, like Levi's talking about, there's no there's no breaker. There's no fuse. There's no nothing. Okay. So it'll just sit there and just keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay. Now you're draining your battery out. Your battery's not going to be worth shit after you get done with it. Well, dude, I'm paranoid about, like, getting shocked. So, like, I'm jump jumping somebody off with of jumper cables. I'm like... I know how it oh, works. I've done it a million to, times, but when I plug it, I'm scared. a few scared. times, and you won't be scared of it I, anymore. I know. That's why I hadn't. It's not that bad. Dude, I've been hit by 440 more than once. Dude, the first time I got hit by 440 working on a unit, I was I was in a lift. Uh, uh, like a scissor I'm, lift? Yeah, like a scissor lift. Okay. I was probably, it was a gymnasium. So, I, you know, I was maybe, I don't know, 14, 20, I don't know, somewhere feet up in the air. And I touched something, obviously, I shouldn't have been touching. And it hit me so hard, it just knocked my arm, like my arms were, were inside the unit and knocked me down. And my, my messed up, like, brain, I thought, like, there was a huge guy behind me, like 6'6", six, six, like 400-pound motherfucker. And he just hit my arms with everything that he had. Like, I thought you I legitimately literally thought that? Like, your first reaction, like, okay. like, like, because you got hurt. So you're like, your brain's like, what happened to me? Yeah. Why am I hurt? Like, that was my thought. Like, someone just knocked the shit out of me and it was uh yeah it was it does feel like that it was electric like because obviously i'm by myself yeah i'm like hitting like a lot of different like human emotions here but yeah i got hit so hard and it coming so hard and like my arms were sore my arms were sore like somebody like just fucking (laughs) right shit out of me right i'm not gonna hit that much but uh, but like an electric fence uh yeah, Elect- electric fence is like a lot of volts, but low amperage. So when I've held an electric fence and it runs through me, it don't feel that bad. But when I, I grabbed a T-post, I guess that grounded me or something? Grounded you. I remember and right. then that. I grabbed the electric fence? I'm the one that told you to grab it. Oh, yeah, you were there? Okay, you were, y'all were there. Yeah, because you were grabbing it, and you were like, I feel it, but it's not really doing anything. And I'm like, grab that post and see what it does. Yeah, that <laughs> fucked me up, son. That arm, it felt like it was going to rip my goddamn arms well, off. Well, because <laughs> when you grabbed it without grabbing the post, you were no, not much different where you were... Almost no different than like birds sitting on a on a line. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't really going through you. It was yeah. going past you. But when you when you grab that post, it you were the you. you were the quickest path to ground. Yeah. That fucking was a serious deal there. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna fuck you up. See, that's when, when I touched that four forty in that unit, it it wasn't so much that I touched the four forty with one hand, it was the other hand was touching the frame of the unit. Uh, so shit. that grounded me out. That's why it went from one arm through my shoulders through to the other arm. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's enough electricity talk. I feel like, I feel like we've, uh, I don't know. Levi, you ever been electrocuted? Yes. <laughs> he was, uh, uh, he was, uh, Ernest and, uh, Ernest goes to jail. <laughs> No, nah, yeah, no. Nah, where he, all the shit starts sticking to him, and he's That's got right, he was he's, like, he's, like, he's like raiding afterwards, like just electrocuting the shit out of people. Did you say raiding? Raiding. It's, it's rodding, motherfucker. Well, I agree to disagree. I don't even know. Are you, is this a Mortal Kombat character? <laughs> yeah. Well, it is the, riding, it, though, isn't no, it? No, in the movies, they called him Raiden. It's riding in Metal Gear. Oh, I'm talking about Raiden from uh, Mortal Kombat. It's spelled the same, though, right? Yeah, but pronounced differently. There you go. Mortal Honestly, Kombat, Mortal the, more I, the more I think about it now, I'm pretty sure I always said Raiden. Yeah, it, I'm pretty sure, like, Mortal Kombat. Well, it wouldn't Raiden. have been wrong, because when you select your character in Mortal Kombat 1, it says their name, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it says Raiden. All right, all right, I humbly, <laughs> I humbly submit. No, but, but you're correct, though, in Metal Gear Solid, yeah. it's Raiden. They always call him Raiden. But now I'm wondering if that was just, like, mistranslated somehow. Possibly, but... Is it spelled the same? Yeah, it's spelled R-A-I-D-E-N. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same, okay. 
So yeah. Tell me about you getting electrocuted. N- nerd talk. Uh, so <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> TJ, bring it back around. To, let's get back around to something interesting. I, I've been. No, no, uh, I'm glad we settled So for it, for me, the electrocution electrocution that took place was uh, I was changing out a light fixture, took it out on a ceiling fan, and put in a new light fixture in the girls' room. Yeah. And uh, you got electrocuted doing that? I did. Uh, I did the same job because we both had the, bunk you beds. You turn the light switch off? It was off. Yeah. But then how'd you get electrocuted? Well. Somebody came in from no, the no, 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 no. Well, Somebody came in here. Like, Why is it so dark in here? <laughs> no, so, so uh, there, there was a uh, uh, shit. What do you want to call it? Uh, I, I turned, I turned it, the light back on, but it was like where the, uh, where the, where the circuit breaker was. Right. I actually got electrocuted at the breaker box. Wait, what? And and, and I've, I, I, so how the, f- so. The, the the reason why was there was something that was kind of like rigged in, in the little circuit box and I didn't realize because it wasn't going all the way over. Wait, the breaker? Yeah, somebody had tried to force the breaker to stay. Oh my god! Yeah, because there's something terribly wrong with your. Is this in your current house? Yeah, we and I fixed it since then. I okay, was I was making the same. We need to end this and go. Yeah, I was making no, no, the same. No, no. We're gonna make no. sure Levi's house is not currently on no. fire. So, so <laughs> we couldn't figure out what was happening to uh, the line uh, because the electricity wouldn't like it. Just the light wouldn't come back on. But and I thought it was the breaker. I fixed that first, and a hey, light fixture came on. But all of a sudden, it would just kept kicking the breaker. I was like, some something's not doing right. Well, come to find out that the uh, wire that was uh, the hotline that was feeding into the, the light fixture, it had actually, uh, the the casing had come off of it while trying to fix it up there, and it, there was a raw piece exposed, and it right. hit the uh, um, the little frame, like whatever what you want to call the, it, the, 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 box? Ha- the housing of the light. Okay. Uh, of where it used to be. So there's like a little square frame because there's a little square light that was up there. Right. And I was touching it. Uh, um, oh yeah, that'll I get came you. Back and the light was still on. And I was like, I don't understand what's well, happening. Some, and then all of a sudden, boom! I was like, oh. Well, yeah, because some asshole scraped the insulation off the wire and didn't tape it up or fix it. Right, exactly. He he didn't put no tape fuck on it or anything. Guy. And I, as soon as I grabbed it, I mean, it shot me. I was like, fuck! And like, I, I felt numb in my teeth. God. And oh my I, god! I would be dude. so mad. Like like getting shot. Now I've been shocked like we were talking about. Yeah. I don't literally more times than I can remember, but when it's not my fault. Yeah. It, like, makes you so mad. Yeah. Like, so mad. Well, I didn't realize what happened until I saw it. So, I, as soon as I got electrocuted, I went back to the breaker box, turned it completely off, making sure it was off, grabbed the flashlight, and I, granted, I'm in a dark room. It's probably about, like, the time is right now. It's, like, you know, 6 or 7 o'clock at night, and I'm just taking a flashlight looking, like, where, where the fuck? Is, it's got to be touching somewhere. Yeah. And then find it, and there's a big raw spot in the line where it's just oh, right God. up against the housing of the light. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's bullshit. When yeah, that, kind that of stuff sucks, happens. dude. But I tell you, I, mean, I tell you, no, it was, I mean, but it's fine. I mean, I mean, it's kind of like you. I never grabbed the T post or one of the electric fence, but I mean, uh, you know, I always you hear about people like losing their sense of smell, like uh, you know, someone or like something weird happened where it yeah. just jolts the fuck out of them. But it just uh, it didn't do that for me. I just kind of felt like numb in my teeth. You know, like how you get like uh, fluids in your in your uh, IV or something like that, where you can kind of taste like a metallic kind of thing. Yeah. that's kind of what I felt, and I was just like, what the fuck. Yeah, getting and shocked it fucking just sucks. Me off. I'll tell you what'll shock the shit out of you that you wouldn't expect is um they don't really exist anymore, but phone lines. Like old school really? phone lines. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been working on them like trying to get shit hooked up. And it's fine unless someone calls you. Oh, really? Because because see the way it works, it Let's would think. send voltage through to ring the phone. The phone okay. you know, old phones, they didn't plug up. Now cordless phones right. did, but old phones didn't plug up. They rung because of the voltage coming in through. So you'd be fine doing everything normal. Someone would call and it'll knock the piss out of you. I didn't know. I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah, I, mean, I would. I would have been careful. Just, phone just as bad. Just as bad as like one ten. Like what you were messing with. Like it, it, oh, it, it's when like it doesn't hurt you, but it just makes you really mad. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> like like. Gosh, like I can't believe this shit just happened. I picked up a uh, in Gatlinburg. I picked up like one of those. Uh, like a, I don't know. I picked up a pin. Oh, and I didn't know things, it was a prank yeah. bin, and dude. <laughs> fucking, I threw that shit down. Dude, it wasn't bad, but it just like when you don't expect it, it'll scare yeah. the shit out of you. There, there's something I've always wanted that is just like those kind of pins. Yeah. Or whatever. I've never actually spent the money on those things because I, I you'll see them at novelty shops like yeah. when you're on vacation or, or something like That's that. Exactly what I but, said. But because uh, I saw them down in Florida and stuff when you go down there, but the uh, on uh, Think Geek uh, magazine or, mm-hmm. or whatever, or you know, a little nerdy shop, you yeah, know, whatever. Yeah. They have a hot potato ball. 
that has all these little nodes on it, It'll and it shock shocks you, the fuck out of you. But it doesn't you're everybody. Last with it. Uh, so, so you're, so you're passing, passing around, around or whatever, and then all of a sudden the timer goes off, and whoever's holding it just it's probably about the fuck like, out of you. like oh, we we uh, play that with the kids. We shocked yeah. ourselves with the uh, I think the fun. dog uh, dog collar dog collar uh, shock. Yeah, dude, it's probably hey, about the same. Now, I thing. have been shocked by one of those. I, I never was brave enough to stick it to my neck because I was just terrified. Oh, I stuck of it in my neck. I stuck it to my hands, and I was just like, "Damn!" I stuck it in my hand. It was bad, and like. It was like one to five, and I did it, I did it on like one, and like one is not even worth having. Three like kind of sucked, but it was just like, all right, well I've went this far. I got to see what yeah. five is like. Yeah. Damn, dude, five five fucking sucked, man. Five gave me a headache for the rest of the night. Really? Yeah, man, that's yeah, a it's, shitty way to to go. Yeah, it's it's not fun uh, at at all. But you know, huh. you, you know what how you things do? go. Hey, I got something to show hey, y'all. Is this enough electricity talk? Yeah, yeah. I got something to show y'all. You were talking about, uh, well, are you gonna are you gonna bust out your notebook or? or uh, oh I'm wait, no no, 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 no. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play something here. A news article. Uh, did y'all hear about this this uh, Asian lady that was dropping off pamphlets at uh like for her business, her interior decorating business? Oh, at the at the door at the, at the dentist. No, no. I okay, have, I don't know this. She one. got a, the, this. So this dentist dentist lady called back and just listened to the voicemail this lady left. Oh, this on is this a completely Asian different lady. thing. Then. I just wanted to let you know you sent me a brochure of sorts. Um, please do not send me another one. I don't deal with Asians with oh, the last shit. name of Wong. <laughs> I do not deal with Wong. Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> well, tonight a Las Vegas interior designer says she received that racist voicemail. It is. Uh, from someone with a phone number connected to a Las Vegas dentist's office saying that she does not work with Asians. In an exclusive interview <laughs> with 13 Action News, the interior designer says she had to play wow. this voicemail over and over just to make sure she heard this woman correctly. And Sasha Gomez right now is live at a restaurant where a group of Asian American leaders, well, they are furious here with how this woman is being treated, <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> But look, look at all these people. Well, they're completely we had a whole meeting about one goddamn voicemail. Are they, are they all Asians? They're, we're seeing the back of their heads. They cannot believe that someone would say such a hateful... How is this a news story? Uh, it looks like a bunch of Asian heads to me. I've got to say, though, out of all the... brochure of sorts, please do not send me another one. I don't deal with Asians with the last name of Wong. I do not... It's, it's, so wait, it's the, this, it's this lady's like, like, hey, no Wongs. Yeah, I'll take on. all the Wangs you got. Yeah, yeah I'm trying wongs. to decide, is she racist against Asians or, or is it wongs. Just, <laughs> or just Wongs in general? She said there's something Wong here. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, man, well, did, you, well, did well, you really just do that? Did well, you really just she well, said well, two well, Wongs well. don't make a, a right? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're done here. No, we're but done makes here, one racist white lady. I'm pretty sure it's on the other side of the phone. Listen, listen. Two Wongs make a white woman mad. But I mean, what did she say? She, did did uh, she say especially Wong or just? No, she said, I don't deal with Asians. Pause. And then said with the last name Wong. So is it just the Wong family she has a problem I with? I don't know. They never elaborated. She wasn't, uh, didn't, didn't give uh, comments when they contacted her, by wow. the way. Wow. Well, I assume not. But it is kind of nice to see, like, out of all the news going on, like, like this, re- this is a story about racism that is actually legitimately racist. Like, yeah, yeah, no yeah. doubt, no doubt. It's not, like, it's like, not, it's not interpretive in any way. Right, it's, it's, the, it's very it's, clear cut. It's not like this guy kicked this person out of a store and they happen to be a minority. Like, right, that's not necessarily racist. This woman clearly stated, "I don't do business with Asians." <laughs> Like, named Wong. Like that is that would be that the is defense, the definition the of racist. Unless she's trying to say, yeah, that Paul has really killed her. If she was really against the Wong family, yeah. she shouldn't have paused right there. I have a and real she issue shouldn't have with said, the Wong family. And she shouldn't have said Asian. She should have just went right into the Wongs. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna take a spin off this Asian thing and actually I'm dip into take something a spin that I have. Off right this now. Asian thing. Did you so, just flip through your notebook and been like, I "Oh, no, I got an Asian right. story no, here." It's not. It's actually not an Asian story, but I thought it was gonna be. And what I mean by that is, I thought about like weird foreign expressions and and you know uh, or words that people say, uh, like uh, "There's more than one way to skin a cat." And I automatically assumed it was going to be that Asian. Was Asian. I think you're racist. Was that you on the call? Yeah, that's racist that you assumed that was Asian. Of course it is, <laughs> and I, I humbly accept that. Okay, fair enough. But, We're going to love you. We're going to love you just the but, same. But uh, so I researched that and the origin story Remember of uh, of this, and uh, 
there's actually nothing that goes back. Apparently, it was like an old English play, uh, and then somebody had said that, and they thought it was cool, and that just became a really? trendy thing to say. That's really all it was. It was literally at like a playwright had wrote it in a play, and it just kind of stuck. But uh, you know, that's I, funny though. So it was basically just a meme. Yeah. It, it was, was a meme was from the meme? old time. Circa 1854. And everybody's like, there's more than one way to spin a ca- skin a cat. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? You hadn't seen the play, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Let me, <laughs> what are you right. doing this Friday? Yeah, but <laughs> Is uh, there more than one way to skin a cat? Th- th- this is the thing that I thought about. Is what sick motherfucker is actually going to skin a cat? I don't know, man. Like, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you, if you needed... I mean, maybe you need like a good fur coat or fur blanket, well, and you're not like. I, I, mean, I took this and I and I was like, Corona is, is this was, is it was gonna have yeah. all those goddamn little puppy Dalmatians well, into a coat? I, I, yeah. t- I typed this in and I was like, is this you know Asian? Because I was curious about it. <laughs> is this Asian? Did and, you and, go to isthisasian.com? No. I'm starting to feel like we should really no. have a whole episode no, that revolves around your Google search history. No, no. no. <laughs> like we're going to no, get no, lots no, no. of stories. No, but I was just curious about the origin thing of it. And so I pulled it up, and, and uh, as soon as I typed this in, it automatically pulled up that there is a dog meat festival that takes place in Guangxi, China, every single year. And it actually, you would think that that's like something really old school where like Chinese people are eating cats and or, do- or dogs in this instance. And it said that it started in 2009, this festival did, for the first time, the annual dog meat festival, dog meat where festival. over 10,000 dogs are slaughtered and killed and consumed at yeah. this festival Man, each year. I don't think I could eat it. Like I'm, I'm all down for like trying new shit, but right. eating a dog... Dog just seems fucked up, man. I it don't, does, man. Really? I don't know. Like, like I'm not. We talked about this before. I think on a podcast about right. eating like human. Like, I just don't think I would ever eat a human. Yeah. And I don't think I would ever eat a dog. Just out of like principle. I don't. I don't know. I just can't. Right. Well, eat I mean, dog just seems well, well, I mean, yeah. I don't eat, think I would eat a cat. No, I'm with you because, because like in human consumption, we don't eat any dogs or cat species of any kind that. Well, I'm really aware what, of. What right? about, Not to mention that's like a super lean meat, right? Both yeah. dog and cat would. Yeah. Be what? Like, what if though? Because they say mountain lion, very delicious. Who says that? I, I've heard. I watch, listen to a lot of hunting podcasts, like and the, things like that. The point zero zero one percent of people that's ever killed an yeah. a mountain lion. But but yeah. I've I, I've heard those same people like uh, uh like from the Meat Eater podcast. They'll say that that. They tried coyote because some people do. Yeah, and not not yeah. good. Not yeah. I've seen where he tried that. And that he said either. it was just. It was he said gross. that was he gross. Like it, but yeah. he also tried. Uh, Steve Ronella, we're talking about. He tried mountain lion and said, and he said he eats. He. I mean, it would be cool. I mean, I, I know he's ate like bear meat, and we've talked about like his trigonosis story and all that other kind of stuff. But eating bear would be kind of cool just to say that you did it because like a big predatory animal that you know. Right. Uh, but they got a lot of fat on. But but okay, what what carn- uh, carnivorous. Is yep. that right? Is yep. that the right word? Well, carnivorous, carnivorous species. Carnivorous, carnivorous, carnivorous animals. Omnivore and herbivore. Yeah, but yeah, carnivore. But carnivorous animals. Oh, is that the right, right way to say it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, what carnivorous animals do you eat, or what is acceptable to eat? I mean, we talk about that's bear, true. but they got a shit ton of fat yeah. on yeah. them. Almost what, everything we eat, almost everything we eat is herbivore. Is an herbivore, right? That's because true. that's how the food chain goes. They eat the plants. We eat them. Right. Yeah, I don't really know. That's good. That's a very good I mean, question. That's a good observation. I mean, there's people eat anything. Yeah, pig will eat anything. So that's yeah, I'm but, not counting but, that, but, but I'm saying like a straight up carnivore. Oh, okay. I mean, bears will eat lots of different shit too. Yeah, but bears I would are say they're, hmm. But I mean, they eat a lot of meat. But depends I mean, on what kind of bear. I mean, a, a polar bear is almost exclusively carnivore. Right. A, a black bear is you cut. Yeah, they they, they the, I mean, they're just as much plants. Carnivore. They're just as much plants as they are and animals. I've eaten shark and alligator, and they're both. Like a hundred percent carnivore, right? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Shark doesn't yeah. eat. I, I think it's. I think it's more just like pre- predatory animals that you know, like. There's something kind of fucked up about eating, but the thing with sharks, though, like they got a lot of fat on them too, and so do bears. Like, but if you think of like a cat or a dog, like, I mean, unless they're someone's pet, they don't have that much fat on them. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I don't know if you can look at their. I mean, diet neither do deer. And decide that because I mean, you you look at. You, you, you look at like uh, some of the people that have done the all carnivore diet. Humans, they don't look like different. I mean, they're leaner, but they don't look different than. No, a I'm not saying human. the person's a carnivore. I'm saying the meat you're eating is from an animal that's a carnivore. Right, but what I'm saying is like it doesn't change your diet. Doesn't change you that much, does it? Well, I'm talking about the meat though. The meat that you're yeah. getting from is from a carnivorous source. Yeah, right. I, well, versus a, per, an, like a person who ate you, only. Uh, would you see any difference between a person who ate only chickens, fish, and well, I guess fish is carnivorous. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Well, 
No, they'll eat. Well, no. Most they fish probably, are carnivorous. If, if you're fishing them out of a lake, I mean, I guess if you're getting like fish from a market, they or probably an, an, an ocean laden fish for the most part would be that's a good point. carnivorous. I never thought about it. Yeah, that's. A good I guess I guess fish would be the really the only carnivorous thing that we really ingest in our diet. Really, uh, most but what if, what do fish eat that are like farm raised though? They're not uh, eating other fish. They, they probably eat like they're eating like grain cat food and, and shit. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, which I mean, that's probably. Yeah. I don't know. It just. That's that's the point I was trying to get at. Like eating a carnivorous well, animal. I mean, catfish eat shit, so I mean, you know. That's why I don't eat it. Dude, I, I don't I don't eat catfish. No, fuck that. I, I love don't, catfish. No, though. I did, and I'm done with it now. Because if you're okay with eating a catfish, that yeah. means you're okay with eating a buzzard. Ignorance or a is vulture. bliss, bro. If a buzzard tastes that good, I no, eat it. no, it's worse. Eating a catfish <laughs> is worse because a buzzard does not eat literal shit. Yeah, and a catfish true. will crawl along the bottom of the lake yeah. and just suck up shit and not yeah. eat an actual living thing. No, you're right. You're right. You're right, you're right about that. It right. is. They are a disgusting I, I, animal. I really just try not to think about it. Honestly. I feel like I feel like we could cut cancer in half if we just outlawed cow. You I, think that's I, a I, cause? I am kind of curious. I don't know. Like, I don't know like, if that's a cause or not, but it can be good for you. <laughs> well, I am kind of curious. Like, like out of all the things meat-wise that we eat as humans, yeah. uh, the most diverse... Uh, um, I guess type of meat we can eat is fish because fish has way more species that are privy to us to actually eating versus like, you know, we, I mean, there's only like a select number of different breeds of cows that we eat and, you know, chicken or vice versa. Right. Uh, with fish, what, what's y'all's favorite? What, I mean, what's your preference for oh, fish? Man, I'm know. just curious. I like lots I've never of asked fish. you guys this. Man, um, I, I don't see. The thing was, I, I was, I Ma- thought. Amanda, Amanda don't, really doesn't like fish all that much, unless it's fried. I mean, I mean, I mean, and I saw a lot of people are like that. No, yeah. Well, see, I was that way. I, w- I was pretty anti-seafood. Um, and then my wife was, like, very pro-seafood. Mm-hmm. And I so, am too. Yeah. And so we would go out places, and she would order, like, different things, like halibut and um, mai-mahi and stuff like that. Dude, like, my, my God, Well, she man, would let so me good. try it, and I'm like, this is really good. And what I right. found out was I never had, like, legit you just not been exposed fish. to it yeah i've been exposed to like bullshit fish like you get some sea pack or so what's that other what's yeah. that guy in the yellow trench coat that's on in the in the frozen fish out oh, gordon's, gordon's fish sticks gordon's man fish sticks, right yeah. yeah shit shit like that so then when i got into like finding out that i really like seafood um i remember going to florida one time and they had a like a sampler platter at this restaurant we went to and everything on it was fucking amazing like Dang. some of the best food ever so now I know, like, I'm 100% in on seafood, but I, there still is I don't really seafood, know though. what I like right. and what I don't like. Well, when we went to Florida the last time, I always said I hated crab. Dude. But then, okay, uh, hear me out. All right. Hear all me right. out. When I, w- <laughs> when I started talking to people about it, I realized all I'd ever had was crab from, like, Kroger or, like, something prepackaged. Mm-hmm. And then I found out that Fresh. it's not even really crab. It's some poor fish that doesn't even get its name put on the package. It's imitation. It's an imitation crab. So then I said, all right, because my sister, we, we all went as like a family. So my sister is a huge crab fan. So I'm like, all right, whatever you order, I'm ordering what you order, and I'm eating it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, was that some of the best food I've ever ate. Now, I don't know if it's worth the work. Crab legs was yeah. a you get, ton of work. You get, you get better at it. A ton time. of work. You do. I would almost pay an extra twenty dollars for my meal to have somebody like. I'll take that twenty dollars like, next time we go. Strip that shit out of there for me, because I, I get them out perfect, man. I, I'll, just, I'll take that little thing, dip it. In everybody, the everybody, like, everybody was, everybody was yeah, done dude. and bored, and I'm there working my ass off trying to get these. It's the first time I ever ate crab yeah, legs. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. And so I got it out, but it was still. You something look like, like me with a pair of chopsticks, son. But with some hot oh, butter. I'll man. show you how to do some chopsticks. You good yeah. at them? Oh yeah, I'll I'll pick your nose with some chopsticks. God dang, man! Look, he I'm, with you. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, we're fist. We're done with high fiving, but we're fist bump. <laughs> yeah, and this is a fist bumping kind of year. Oh yeah. shit! 2019, 2019 the year of the fun. fist bump. Well, fist listen, bump. I'm allergic to shellfish. Uh, right. Which Are you 100 percent allergic to shellfish? I well, know you were as like a kid. Yeah, I haven't tried it as an adult. But I mean, you can, um, like, if you like, okay, I'm going saying, to the doctor either. No, no, no I just but, eat but just saying and got this, like, twice. like if, uh, like if you go to a restaurant with somebody right. and they order shellfish, you could take some of it and like rub it on your hand. Oh yeah, and just see like if okay. you break out, if that's you do anything, or, or you take the bear girls. That's a good you, point. Put it in like just kind of work yourself up to it. Yeah, I don't ever like. I don't make a big deal about it. I'm not even telling the hibachi chef. 
Yeah. Like, no, I don't I mean, worry about like it. Like, they got to separate your yeah, stuff? Yeah, I don't, or I just don't order it. Now, I do occasionally, I'll be on the road somewhere eating out at dinner and I'll, and I'll come back to the hotel and fucking break out and I don't know what from. Oh, I don't so know if it's it cross might, contamination or what, but it could be that. I'll be. just keep some Benadryl with me and pop some of those motherfuckers to reverse it. But uh, I was going to say, if the, if, if the hibachi thing is not fucking you up, then you're not super allergic well, to it. But if you're getting random breakouts, Occasionally, it could it, be. I mean, it'll be every like four four years or so. It's not like it happens all the time, but every once in a while, I'll just be like randomly. I would just start do, I would do out. that if somebody you're like eating out with has like an extra shrimp or crab or something like that. Well, I, I mean, I've, I've been like with just, some girls just, that just were rub it on your. I've hand. been with some girls that were questionable when I, you know, when I was single, and uh, I didn't get crabs, so I don't know. Yeah, but they're not out. a shellfish. Yeah. They're just well, a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. it's, it's like a is that a, if you're allergic to shellfish, is it like crabs worse? If you get like. Oh, you think so? You think you get broke out worse? I don't know. I don't think they're literally crabs, so I don't think it. I don't <laughs> think it's like it a nickname. Yeah, I think that's more of a nickname. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's fair like enough. Bed bug kind of kind of thing. No. So, anyways, what I was gonna say is, I like most every fish because that's all I can order at a fast food place or a, or like a Japanese place. I gotta stick to the fish, son. Yeah. Now, uh, I do have a question since you got exposed to the shellfish and and stuff like that. Like, are you more bummed about TJ not being able to eat crab or shrimp? To me, there's one clear winner in in that argument between the two. Man, well, I don't know. Like th- that one time, and like I said, this is this is pushing two years ago. This summer will be two years ago that I had the crab. That See? that is that is one of the best like meals I've ever eaten. But you've honestly. been two years and you haven't. It wasn't so good that you had to get back to well, it. It's such a fight, man. Like I I I said after that, I said I love it, but I'll never do it again. It's expensive unless too, I mean. it is expensive. Oh yeah, it was like fifty bucks. Yeah. For the God, plate. Damn. But um, yeah. It's good though. I mean, it really. But what? Is. Oh, and thank God, my sister was like, she didn't even get the top tier. The top tier was more expensive than that. Uh, the top tier's not worth it. I'm just gonna throw it out there. King crab is not as good as snow crab. That's what it was. Yeah, king crab. It's she not as good. she opted for snow crab, and I'm like, all right, well, fifty go- bucks, and you still got to do all that work. Yeah, I know that's bullshit. That's the thing. And so what I said was, is I'll eat it again, but only if I'm like with like adults and we're just decided we're chilling at this place for, for the long next time. two or three hours. You know, we're we're gonna eat and we're gonna sit here and drink and I can take my time with this. But like my sister, like she was in and like she was knocking them crab Shucking. legs out, man. Yeah. Like she done had like her system down and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like I left a lot of good meat like on the plate. They give you like some butter to dip it in? Yeah. Yeah. Hot yeah. Butter. yeah. And they give you all the tools to like do the shit with. You don't but- need any tools but your motherfucking hands. I, you don't even use a tool? No. I started I started getting away uh, from now, the tools. Now, now, you do need it on occasion. Sure. And uh, honestly, the best tool you can have is a fork occasionally. You just you just run it and kind of work it. Well, and you can. They had a thing way. that was kind of like a glorified letter opener. Yeah, that kind of yeah. that kind of helped me a little bit. It works, but it, I mean, your hands are so greasy well, by the time. When you, you get just... to the first leg joint, that thing's kind of out, but yeah. it kind of gets you enough to get you started for sure. I feel like this is not interesting at all. I, feel, not, like, I well, feel like we should move on. I don't care. I was, I'm sure. interested yeah. in it. But, but Anyways, uh, did you have another question about something? No, all I'm right. good. I was just curious about that. I We, we hadn't talked about it, so I was curious. I, I have Tales of the Guano. Oh, shit. Returning for 2019. Yeah. I got to say, I like hated this so much the first time you did yeah, it. You now I love me. it. Like you I'm made. straight up. I'm, I'm absolutely excited now. You made fun of me the first time, dude. I did, and I think I made fun of you every time since then. But now I'm not. We need a we need a sound to play, like tales from the guano. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we'll work on that. Yeah, <laughs> tales from the guano. Do you remember what guano is, Chad? Bat shit. Uh, I know you know. Yeah. I hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, I didn't. I didn't listen to Levi at all. Let me think about it. Um, I remember it's bat. It's uh, bat feces. That's exactly yeah. it. Dude. I remember that. Well, See, yeah, I, you know, you know, my, I automatically my, think of my mind's like a still uh, trap. Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective two. Uh, not Pet Detective then. When Nature Calls. When Nature Calls. Because yeah. Chicago. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what they call him? White Devil. What was that? White Devil. Yeah. What was the word they used there? Equinsulancha. Dude, you know everything about this movie. Yeah, Levi, you're. What's he? What's he saying? White Devil, and they spit in each other's face to say hello. You're, right, like, you're like an IMDb of. Uh, I'm told that I know a bunch of random ass stuff, and for no. Will you do the same thing with football and and basketball? I don't think you know anything about any other sports, but you those have good two. memory. He knows. He knows a good deal about some MMA. soccer, and some MMA. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, this one, this story just st- kind of stuck out, stuck out to me because of one thing. But I'll, I'll, re- I'll read a little bit of it. All right, I'm, I'm giving you benefit. Like if, if this is bad, this is going to ruin Tales of the Guano. For me. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Well, they've I been mean, so good. We've got more than one, so just it's kind of like don't just bank it all in one. No, it's, see, I'm it's excited. A, cle- now. a collective package. I'm legitimately no. excited. So, for a, this. As, as Jet Airways uh, Flight Nine whatever took off from Mumbai on Thursday, something terrifying quickly became clear. The cabin was not properly pressurized. Oxygen mass dropped from the cabin ceiling. 30 of out of 166 passengers experienced nose and ear bleeding. Some also complained of headache. An official with India's civil aviation said, according, uh, said that due to loss of cabin pressures as well as happened, uh, there's a lot of other words here, but I'll tell you the thing that terrified me the most about this story is they said that what happened was the pilots didn't flip this switch to equalize the cabin pressure. Like, that's it? There's just a switch that needs to be flipped? That's it. How the fuck is that not automatic? That's yeah. exactly like, what I wondered. Not, how exactly. is that not put into the... Yeah, once you reach a certain altitude, kicks on, bam. So yeah. it requires is there not a guy even to like not a, forget like to Jesus, flip one like there's switch. Not, there's not even a light that comes on that says, hey, flip this. Wait, why yeah. weren't the pilots fucked up? Uh, I don't know. They may well, have they, they flipped the switch for their room. Their, the cabin <laughs> was automatic. Yeah, the pilots. It the, says, during the climb, the crew forgot to select switch to maintain cabin pressure is what it says. All right, well, next question. What airline is this on? It's he some Indian. Jet, some Indian. Jet Air. Yeah. No, is what he said? Jet it's, Air. Uh, it's uh, they have jet, here. jet Airways. Yeah, but they got those here, right? I've never seen them here. They're not real common. They're not one of our big, big four or whatever. I, I mean, I don't know. I've seen them like here in Nashville, but I feel like I've seen them like on TV. I've never flown here. one, but e- either way, I, I was just blown away that it's as simple as a switch. That's dumb. Yeah, like like so so the stewardess is going up like that, knocking on the cabin's door dumb. like hey everybody's like ears and like fucking noses are bleeding like and dude's like oh shit and he like flipped the switch <laughs> and like that was it. I know that's some bullshit. That's it is crazy some bullshit. Man. That's crazy. So anyways, that's why All right, I got I'm still that story. in on Tales of the Guano. That's a good See? story. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's a good story. And I'm so glad now that like you're you're like doing it from an iPad. Like you were you were like literally like writing this shit like he you print, had printouts. Yeah, you had printed pages. <laughs> hey man. Jeez. Well, we're moving up in the world, son. It was like I'm glad, like you printed MapQuest off for me to like get, get I wanted to your house. I want to make sure you knew how to time. get here, you know, because <laughs> it's a new address, a new house. All right, um, in Australia, a runaway train went for over 50 miles with no one on board. It was carrying steel, no no engineer, nothing. It was a Wait. runaway train for 50 goddamn miles. How does it get started by itself? Is this an electric train? Uh, I don't know. What does it look is like? It a tram. What, I mean, what happened was that no, it looks like the, a thermal the engineer guy like got off to check something. Didn't have the brakes engaged like the safety protocol would say. He got complacent, and he got <laughs> off there, and the train got to rolling. So wait, it's literally just rolling like it's rolling downhill. That's the way they make it sound. For a whopping fifty-seven miles, a runaway train loaded with iron ore hurtled down the tracks in Western Australia. So it's down. With, so some some with, asshole just forgot to set the parking brake. But no, what happened was he forgot to put it in park. He put it in that bitch in neutral and it's right. going rolling. Yeah. With nobody on board, the train was eventually deliberately derailed. Wait, for, how? Creating a dramatic crash One of those scene split. with huge lengths is of. That, is off. that how they do it? With uh, a huge crash scene with huge lengths of crumpled, twisted metal on a bright orange desert sand next to the train track. They had to fucking derail this goddamn but how? thing to, how do you to, to de- stop it. How do you deliberately derail a train? It has to be. It didn't really say. Like, I read the article. It never said how they did I it. I mean, right? I know there's a lot of ways to derail a did, train, but like on the fly, like you decide, I we got to derail this train. How like, the fuck do you I do that? I assume they parked like a Silverado on the tracks and just let the rest just no, do what it was. No, that train would bust right through that Silverado and keep on going. There's yeah. definitely more to it than that. Yeah, I think they had to divert it off, and it literally just went off like a, a nothing. I mean, you would need like a crane with like a wrecking ball and a motherfucker that's like knows how to like line that right up let me see and knock that i don't even know if that would do it yeah no it, 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 engine, it actually didn't say that hey believe it or not uh bruce willis got off that it. uh that, <laughs> I bet he they, was unharmed, no, unharmed. I, bet, I bet honestly i bet they had to get ahead of it and like just stack some shit on like one of the rest that. Bruce Willis, yeah, because no, <laughs> Unbreakable. Uh, no, no, no. You're so on a different thought. No, I, Gla- glass I'm, I'm coming in, out later I'm, this month. I'm in reality. Y'all yeah. are. Y'all are. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm still, I can't get over this. Like, what do you do to derail a train? Like, I feel like they had to have got in front of it and, like, stacked some shit on one of the no, tracks. I, yeah. literally, I literally think to, like, there was a it. desert. They hit a diverter. It went off to a track that was incomplete, and it just drove off into the fucking desert. And as soon as it hit the desert, it just fell yeah, on well, they the said side. Well, crumpled steel and everything. That would thing. be convenient. If You're talking about, like, they switched the tracks, but the tracks went nowhere? Yeah, like, it was something they were planning on doing, but they didn't have complete. And they that would be nice if they, they set some the of those desert. up. That would be. Or if they just well, set I mean, some up as, like, runoffs. I, I, I think they I do, because, like, like, you know, you go down to Chattanooga from here, yeah. and they have those, like, little runoffs where right. a, 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 truck. Tr a truck can go up a hill. I think it's probably the same way with a train. Like, it's a, you can't stop it. It's got to have to Yeah, but I think there's a lot more methed out truckers than there are methed out engineers right true but it's not necessarily for meth it's just hey like i got a flat tire or or some shit i can't stop this yeah but when you derail a train you're killing everybody on the train though like i know but what, this what, just but, happened to be there was no one on it what's the best chance of survival for someone on a train if you ran off a track into some sand and maybe it slows it no, down no your best chance of survival is just coast that shit out until you come to like a hill or something true. to slow you down but I, I never thought that was to be like a still a runaway train. It just seems like something that doesn't exist in 2019. But at it's the true. same time, a lot of a lot of rails share the same pathway. So if you if you know if it's catching up to the other one and you can't stop it, it's gonna hit another train at some point, right? Or or a train yard where there's a ton of fucking trains. I mean, it's got to either hit resistance or well, all of its resistance. But I mean, yeah. it's it's yeah. got to something's got to stop it. But that's yeah. crazy though. Isn't there's it? no good way for that. That is crazy. You know what they need for that? Not all it's literally like, 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 a, like a, a button where, bam, electronically signal the brakes to stop that motherfucking train right where it's at. Yeah, why aren't they all remote brakes? Yeah, a remote control. Because no one ever thinks this is going to happen. Right, right. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, like what you're, you're saying is all fun. You plan for something but that yeah, you never no one, no one creates it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, how many times has there been a train without a conductor on it ever? Right. Yeah, that's true. I, I've never heard of one. Still, though, contingency planning. L listen to this Come one, on, people. Safety News First. story. Artificial intelligence news anchor makes his debut in China. What? Artificial. Oh, AI. Shit. Here's a picture of this guy. Look at him. I'm going to read the story, Man. and then I'm going to play you a video of him. Yeah, I'm sure this shit creeps me the fuck out. That sounds weird. Oh, because it's... Okay. Yeah. So, uh, here, here's the part. So, China's... Xinhu News Agency has billed the technology the world's first artificial intelligence news anchor, unveiled at the World Internet Conference in China's Xinhang province. The anchor learns from live broadcasting videos of himself and can read text as naturally as a professional news anchor. Xinhu says, Some disagree about whether the technology appears natural. You can decide for yourself here with the English-speaking one modeled after the real Zinhu anchor. So I want y'all to watch this. <laughs> see, well, see if you think it's going to freak me the fuck out. I already know. <laughs> I don't think it will because I watched this. Oh, is it bad? They're talking about how natural this is. I hope it's bad. They're talking about how natural this is. It was not natural in the slightest to me. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, well, the good then. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm an English artificial intelligence oh, anchor. This is my very first day in Zingwana's agency. My voice and appearance are modeled on Zhang Zhao, a real anchor with Zinghua, the development of the media industry. Players. I will say his appearance is innovation. pretty fucking good. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. That, his appearance, his appearance is on point. But yeah. they gotta get that voice fixed. The voice is... To keep you informed as texts will be typed into my system, uninterrupted. But, but dude, dude, he looks like I a human, dude, man. if it was turned down and you were just reading the subtitles and oh. looking at him, you would never question. No, right. he looks human, 100%, 100%. man. He looks human as fuck. 100%. But... When I was reading all that about how wow. life like it was, and I played that, I dude, I died laughing dude, to myself. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. I no, feel like I feel like Siri that, is better than that. But looking at that, that's incredible. How yeah. how he looks. I mean, yeah. he well, looks dude, did y'all see that? I, if I know what you're talking about, this I would have like found it already. But there were um, like it was like uh, Nvidia, the the company that makes the uh, graphics cards yeah, and yeah, all that stuff. Right, right, right. They they run through this software, and they were showing all these people. They like like they had all the. And you, you don't think of it like a high school yearbook, but just like all these different people. None of these people actually exist. Really? These were people that look legit as shit, but like they had used different algorithms to create like a, a town of people that just whatever. Like none of these people are real people. That's crazy. But they all look, I mean, none of them were too attractive. None of them were too ugly. They were just kind of right. 
Yeah. Right there. You know, just right. If you went to the store, you would expect to see every that's person. That's good that they didn't make them like overly attractive where it's unbelievable, though. Right. See, that's the thing. That's what's going to fuck us one day. Because yeah, that's how, that's what we're not going to know. If we walked in and everybody was fucking hot. We'd be like, I don't. You, you I think don't this would be there. would be something that that would catch on though? They can type in the text and it immediately reads it. Yeah, it'll probably catch on one day. Uh, until yeah, someone sure. fat fingers it and he and it does the it's auto like correct the, and he says, that, he says, what a uh, uh, fuck, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, that'll happen. Plug, but that's man. not that's not gonna stop it though. I mean, that's that uh, shit's still. Gonna let's see here. I, there was a quote from. Yeah, because they're not gonna be typing it live. It's gonna be you know. The like, Washington Post uh, said that the AI anchor is devoid of decision-making and processing skills and cannot offer the emotional element given by a real journalist. I feel like a real journalist is devoid of all those same things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm 100%. No, no. That is no. fucking bullshit. No, that is true. You've seen that, you've right. seen that video of like all those journalists from like saying all over the country saying the things. same goddamn thing. And they uh, say That it, creeps me out, dude. And it's weird. They, absolutely creep. That's some 1984 shit that right there. Creepy. And they say it with like no emotion whatsoever. Yeah, but yeah. like who's given this message of every person, the person the same that owns thing. all of those news agencies, yeah, yep. Ted yep. Turner. That shit is fuck. Uh, was that Ted? Tur- <laughs> I don't know. Well, he's dead, but <laughs> yeah, is Ted Turner dead? Yeah, Ted Turner's dead. Yeah, uh, right. Wh- who who is that uh, comedian that used to do the Ted Turner impression on Conan when when Conan first went to TBS? I don't know. I don't I know what a Ted Turner impression should look like. He's he just the guy that's a name behind. I know everything. what a Tina Turner. I think, well, know, this guy would come yeah, out. If, he would come out riding a buffalo, and uh, he was just over the what, top, what? Re- just eccentric. It was pretty hilarious. So. Damn, we should have had this queued up. I know. I know. I don't That's know. Good. I, don't I know wouldn't know what, how to get to there. But, anyways, um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's kind of it's kind of creepy. It's kind of creepy. I think I think it's coming. I mean, that AI and all that different stuff, and I'm, I think we're going to be mostly okay with it. Well, you you know, you already like if you go to uh, certain rental car agencies. Um, and the booth, like the counter is busy, they'll have a kiosk. Most of the kiosks, for most of the rental car companies, you're just scanning and dealing with a computer. But some of them, uh, it will be a person will pop up in some some other Damn, location. Damn, son, do you, you just punch your mic right there? Yeah, I know. I just punched out so mad. <laughs> uh, it's some other person will come up on the video and check you in. And, I, you know, I've always assumed they're real. But if they replaced that with a fake person, I literally wouldn't know. Yeah, but would you care, though, is the other thing. No, I wouldn't like, care would, in that situation. Because the thing is, like, when you're dealing with people like that, the whole interaction is so, like, fake anyways. Right, right. Like, would you really care? Now, I feel sorry for the poor bastard who lost his job. Right. But. What do you think we do, man? What do you think we do if we if we lose a ton of jobs to, to artificial intelligence? Do we come up with some new technology that creates jobs? Man, or is I don't it, know. That's I mean, the thing. That's the thing. At that, a certain point, you just buy a recliner and, and chill. Well, but that that's the thing. Do we start paying people to like just chill? Yeah, we got. We do. I mean, because I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I, because, but it, how do you think the the mental health issue, you know, issues in this country are, are ridiculous well, right now I, without without anyone honestly, having a purpose? Uh, I I think that uh, those those machines and stuff like that, uh, you know, if you maybe maybe because like you pay people to like security guards to literally just kind of watch stuff or whatever and right. just kind of monitor or something so uh, i would imagine that those same simulated things would require some sort of people monitoring make sure it doesn't freak the fuck out or you know yeah, crash or something yeah. like that so people who have like work disability or something like that who've been out of the job for a while that's actually going to provide some job yeah, but it doesn't make there. a new job so i'll tell you i've been in factories but, but where you- where there's one guy on an entire line, like a maintenance guy that just like fixes machines, make sure it's working right. Whereas if you would have gone back thirty years ago, it would have been a whole team of people. Right, yeah, there. we, we but, have that. He's a jack of all trades kind of person. But the yeah. point is, you got to have a guy that's that smart to do that. But you only what do you one. do? What do you do with all the dumb people? Right, that can't do that. I mean. You know, you can't you can't say like, well, we should just exterminate everyone. No, that's, if, no, but, if you're but, not mean, saying that, that means you're saying we got to do something with it. No, but T, but TJ is kind of right because like uh, we have a guy like who literally is kind of like a, a Mister Fix It for a lot of different things, and then when it's something that he can't, they call in a specialist to fix whatever the piece yeah. Of but but to chat point, what do you do with the others? What do you do with everybody you, that would have just been what tightening do you the bolts? Because I mean, there's a bunch of people out there that can't do anything other than take orders and. Do, like he said, do a rental car thing. Like, if it comes to actually like doing work and fixing things, I'm not saying they're lazy. I'm saying they're they are incapable mentally of doing right. this. Like, they can put widgets in a box, but 
as far as like making decisions, fixing things, they are not capable of it. So what do we do with those people when we get to the point where machines can do everything? We got AI that can do everything. Drugs yeah. have to be sold by somebody. Drugs is liquid, so we just do that. <laughs> like, like, just give them that. Like, I don't know. I, I'm saying I, I have no That's idea what the right talk answer about the, is. The universal basic income. That's where that conversation right. starts to come in. But the, play. Right. the problem, the right. problem with the universal basic income, always comes to the same thing for everybody. Like, you're gonna work your ass off eight hours a day for some stupid motherfucker to sit there and reap your benefits. Right. Well, to me, to no, me, it, j- the solution to that, just in general, is you, you adapt to it and you find something else to do. You, yeah. I mean, but so what do the, you do? What do you do when machines can do everything? Though that's the problem. At, at, I don't know. Will it ever get to that point? I mean, I could really Where easily see literally that do everything. I it doesn't seem like. I mean, I mean, you're talking away. about like you're talking about like a Jetsons kind of scenario where literally they don't do shit. Not, except not, just hop not on a machine, treadmill and go travel. No, no, no. The world. Not machines can do everything. I'm talking like <laughs> machines can do everything that you would like. Think of any minimum wage job, and a machine can do it. So what do you do with the with the people? Yeah, right. When they can, so when they can flip the burgers, they can take the orders, yeah. they can check people out, they can run the forklift, they can load the trucks, they can unload the trucks. You know, like what do you do then? Now I'm sure for you that would be awesome because now you're you're just programming machines, <laughs> and you don't, you don't you don't have to deal with yeah. the fucking meth heads coming in <laughs> trying to get a uh, job. Well, yeah, all right, I don't have to bitch at them. Damn it, machine! Right, I know. Work faster, <laughs> motherfucker! I know, but it, I'm just saying. There's a bunch of people that are like either going to starve to death, right? Or it'll, we got to do something. I mean, there'll still them. be jobs. There'll be people to build the machines, but there won't be. But there won't be. They won't keep up. That won't. I mean, there won't be as many. You know, and once once um, once the trucks get off the road, I, I, once those are driving, I don't anywhere, know. You, you're, you're t- but the thing is, though, is like when you're talking about that, like what will people do? Yeah, uh, there, there's a lot of assumptions you're, we're making in, in that scenario. Is that I would imagine society would be totally different. Uh, I don't know if we, you know, if people would, you know, if 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 machines are literally doing everything. Do we even need money or to do anything, or is it just like a hey, we live here and we just live to live? That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Because if if they can literally do everything, that means like, they like, can t- farm, cultivate, do all that. Like take the, the the thing. First thing I think about when you say that is I think of the movie Wall E, which which is a kids movie, but right. the, literally they were just living in paradise, and the machines did everything. For but them. then they got fat and they got complacent, yeah, and just didn't do anything, and became and then the machines took over like Terminator, Matrix, and everything else, and we lose and we die. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and then, and then what about when, and like an ex machina when they learn to manipulate us? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's getting into your AI right there. Yeah, like artificial how far, intelligence. How far like, are you going to let your AI go? Like, yeah, that's. I mean, well, and you know, you, we, we talk, you see all those things in movies and stuff like that, and you're like, that ah, shit's never going to happen. But you just take Siri, for example. Siri's kind of like, or Alexa for that version. They're almost exactly like what you see in those old sci-fi movies where all of a sudden like a robot is thinking for itself or it's been programmed to think a certain way. And then at a certain point, they add or change something to where, hey, it can all of a sudden think for itself. And have y'all, have y'all seen it? I got a video to show you. Have y'all seen Alex Jones versus Alexa? Oh, Jesus. No, uh, you've told me about this Alex Jones dude. I don't. I, I can't remember. He's just, uh, he's just a political, a political guy that's like uh, right, chases that's every conspiracy Super theory. Super conspiracy, conspiracy theorist dude. Yeah, and like. Yeah, he he hits him like a like a fucking shotgun. Like he gets one right occasionally, and that apparently like justifies his. Yeah, I was thing. watching this video earlier of him before He's y'all got here. Hang on, I'm gonna start. Oh gonna wait, start he is. Here. It's literally him versus Alexa. I yeah. thought it was like a mashup or something. And, you know, putting little robot systems no. in everybody's Listen. house. Like, look at this, guys. Alexa. Oh, just turned on. Yeah, because you said Alexa, Sorry, you dumb. I can't find the answer to the question. Oh, oh, you can't find, you can't find, the answer to the question, Alexa. <laughs> what is the CIA? The Central Intelligence Agency, the Civilian Foreign Intelligence <laughs> Service of the U.S. government, tasked with gathering, processing, and analyzing national security information from he looks around so proud the world, of primarily oh my God. through I already the use of human this. intelligence. Do you work for the CIA? Alexa. Do you work for the CIA? No, I'm not employed by them. I'm made by Amazon. Alexa. (laughs) I have mainstream news articles that Amazon is owned by the CIA. 
Oh, got to go back to the central computer for that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, oh, oh, my God. Guess, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> to mold educate their own AI system. So oh. Chad's eye roll right there was so hard. No, I'm, I'm blind. I'm One more second. <laughs> that way, you, you know, you leave your smartphone or the power is off. This is always plugged in in every part of the house, listening to everything you do. Alexa, <laughs> are you connected to the CIA? No, I work for Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Nope, nope, let this play out. Alexa, <laughs> you are lying to me. The CIA. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm not always right, but I would never intentionally let to you or anyone else. Let to you. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> You are programmed, aren't you, to give these responses? That's why you're saying you're not lying intentionally. You have been programmed to give these answers, correct? I wasn't able to understand the question I heard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm stopping. I'm oh, stopping. Okay. It. Yes, just stop it. <laughs> but, no, as ridiculous as Alex Jones I just, did. I just I rolled so hard that I know what my spinal cord looks like. <laughs> as ridiculous as that, as that is, it does, it does creep me out that uh, – that, like, because my wife will have the Hey Siri set up where you just have to say Hey Siri. And I'm telling her, I'm like, that means that it has to listen constantly before it will know when you're saying Hey Siri. I always think that's funny. Like, people are like, I'm not getting Alexa because I don't want a CIA wiretap in my house. And I'm like, do you have an iPhone? Right, like, right. Like, well, then you got the same fucking thing. But, but I at least I feel a little bit of comfort. Feel this way. Yeah. I at least feel a little bit of comfort when I have to hold the button down to, like, get Siri activated. Man, I've read, I don't, I don't I've read some stuff, shit, and I'm sure Alex Jones will say these. all these people work for the fucking whatever, the Illuminati or whatever. <laughs> but anyhow, apparently there is um, Alexa and a handful of other commands, and the thing is literally shut down. Like, if, if you don't say those, like, that is all it's doing. And when it says those words, the whole thing powers up. And I believe it because it's the fucking internet. And someone would have found it out by now. Yeah. Some some neckbeard in a like basement. There's like a Reddit or something like that that you're... Uh, or like a 4chan I, I love, or something. Honestly, honestly I don't even know where this like comes from. But I just feel like I feel like if this was wrong, I feel like if, if Alexa was constantly listening to you, if Siri yeah. or Google was constantly listening to you, somebody would have figured it out by now. Huh. So I work for a tech company now, and, uh, and and the amount of people that all have their their little cameras covered up on their laptop screen is, is just oh, hilarious hey, to me. Like you, everybody yeah, has their little. Well, why are you covering up the camera when the fucking microphone's still working? Yeah. Like I want you to. Uh, you, it's want... okay if you hear me jerking off. I just don't want you to see me jerking off. <laughs> That's right. I don't want a video. Of That's me. a big problem. And if it is, you, but you can tell CIA, people you were, you if, can tell people you're punching meat if nobody's seen you. Yeah, but if the CIA like, is, is there, literally watching every webcam, do you think you jerking off is really standing out amongst everyone else? Yeah. Like they're looking at this guy, and being like that dude. That dude taught me some things. All right. That guy there. Hold on. Hold on. Let me copy Sasha, this. Malia, you. cover your eyes. Yeah. I'm looking at something. No, hold on. Johnson. <laughs> J J Johnson down in technical. Watch this. This dude This dude has this reverse Look this grip. Technique. Look at this technique. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is not happening. Like, you are not fucking special. That's what, when it, because I got an iPhone before. I knew anyone else that had an iPhone. Yeah, you talked one, about it. I was one of the first people that had it. And all, of course, that's what everybody said. They're, <laughs> the, they're tracking you. The government's tracking you. They're kind of right. like this. Like, whoever is tracking me has the worst job on the planet. Right. You're I'm the, telling you, the, a person, terrible life. <laughs> the person that has to clean, like, prison toilets has a better job than the guy that's following me around on his iPhone. Yeah. Like, what is right, it? Like, why? Right. You know, I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, like it, it, it does, it does feel like it's a constant little bit of like tightening, like it's a noose just getting a little bit tighter, where they know a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, so I have a, I guess all of us here have a Roomba or or some variation of right. that, mm -hmm. and iRobot, the company that makes that, you know, they they get data back from these from these vacuum cleaners of the patterns that it takes and everything. So they get, I don't, I don't even know how that works, but he yes. said. He said, he was quoted saying, we would never... Wait, how does it get it back if it's not connected 
To the internet. To the internet. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So I it's got to be only those top tier. It's got to be just the top tier ones, maybe. Maybe that's it. But whatever it was, he was quoted when he was asked about it, saying like, we would never, um, we would never sell sell that data or let that data get out without the user consent. But we're confident that when we find uh, when we find a, a use for that data, that users would consent. But still, if it does get out, what are they getting? The layout of your house? Right, but it, it, it's just that's one piece, and then they know the stuff that you're voluntarily given through you know, some right. other it's social media. It's, every, it's, every, data it's, it's everything. It's, gotcha. it's all that you're letting in together. Gotcha. Eventually, eventually, you're at that point where you mentioned 1984. You know, there was the thing called the thought police. They, they knew so much about your life that they would, the thought police would look at your every action and try to, it does seem pretty boring. Well, the, the only thing different between us and 1984 is we got ahead of the, like 1984 would have happened if the government got into technology ahead right. of the people. Right. The problem is, is the government's made up of all a bunch of old people. And they didn't know what the fuck they had right. until now it's here now. So that's like, why they've got the problem is the people know more about technology than the government knows. That's why they've got the Facebook guy in there asking questions. They don't know what the fuck. Yeah, they got him. Mark Zuckerberg in there and they're asking a bunch of these like cringy ass stupid questions, ass questions. Yeah, like that anyone should know the answer to. And he's looking at them like they're stupid and rightfully so. Right, no doubt, no doubt. All right, let me go to another one here. Uh, oh, we got more. Yeah, we got more. So uh, this one right here is. A man is freed after two days stuck in an empty restaurant's grease vent. And this picture is what what gave this Holy one away. Holy shit. Wait. Oh, my God. There's a picture of a man. I can't, I can't exactly tell like how this grease vent is working, but I would feel like a restaurant grease vent. How's he stuck, though? Why can't he just stand up? Uh, it has a, a bend in it. And uh, so and he can't. It's, sli- it's slick. It's a grease vent. And it's up high. He fell down quite a ways. So... Uh, no one can say with certainty why. This tw- honestly looks at like one of them, like like the people that were like trapped in a cave. Oh yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like the descent or something. Really? I haven't seen the descent, but you know, like those guys that like died Whoa. and stuff because they got like oh, stuck yeah. in a cave and like they couldn't. They- you not seen this movie? I, I know. I'm sorry. I know. I'm you haven't seen the descent? No. It's one of my favorite movies, dude. There's so many movies I Wait, haven't seen. I, I haven't seen a lot of movies, I but thought, it's, it's thought, a cave movie. You made me watch it before we went into a cave. Was, he tried to make me watch it, and like I always had like shit else to do. I know he. <laughs> TJ talks about well, it regularly as being like I, one of the best movies. I ever. can't. I, I mean, I can't say anything because there's like a ton of movies. I didn't see Predator until like three years ago. So, um, holy shit! You finally saw Predator? Yeah, you were there. I wasn't there. No, I was there. Yeah, yeah. You finally saw Predator? I did. Wait, hold on. We got it. Hold on. Hold on. Put this on pause. How do you feel about Predator? I mean, I I liked uh, I liked it. It was a good movie. Get yeah. the chopper. Yeah, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's, an, like it's not going to change your life. No, but it was a fun but action same, movie. I, but man. at the same time, Chet, it does change your Chet, life as to how fun this movie is. Chet, yeah, I, I thought we talked about this because I remember you. I was talking about this. We I, talked no, about how he has a I remember you said this is about as useless as a broke dick dog. <laughs> And I yeah. remember he's <laughs> talking about but, Jesse Ventura and all his But TJ stuff. hadn't seen it. Yeah, and I, I was like, I was amazed was. that somebody could not have seen Predator Jesse growing Ventura, up. Jesse Ventura, it made me like Jesse Ventura even more. I yeah, because he had like a bleed. huge dip in his mouth through like the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, I ain't got time to bleed and like that <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah. shit. Was it? Was he was the guy that was holding the uh, Gatling gun? The yeah, the time. Gatling gun, yeah. like just fucking spraying into the thing, and like he like ran it out. God, it was such a good movie. Hi, like so. No, hold on, hold it on. It was a good movie. Like so, like, what did you feel about it afterwards? Were you like, I, I fucked up. I should have watched this earlier. Oh or? yeah, for for sure. I think if I would have seen it when it came out, I would have liked it even even more. But well, there, none there of us nothing, seen it when it came out. I was, we were all like there, children. When there it was came nothing out. wrong. I mean, the movie was spectacular, but it but it didn't change my life or anything. But I was like, fuck yeah, that was awesome. Now I'm ready to go, like, you know, lift some weights and punch stuff. Yeah. Okay. See, that's the difference. <laughs> that's what I think is funny because uh, someone brought this up the other day. Like, uh, when it, whenever y- you have a like a movie about like chicks that are like like super hot, like super big tits, super big ass. Like everybody gets mad about it because that's yeah. like that doesn't represent typical females. Then you got Jesse Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger doing the fucking handshake that like shook yeah. the world. And it, and it, every dude watching it going, I need to do some fucking push ups. Right. <laughs> like, it makes you better. Yeah. Like I needed. Like I. I should so what really you're kind of saying is more. like if we if we show more like hot chicks in movies, like maybe it'll make women step their game up. I don't know. I don't know what it means. Yeah. I'm just saying. And I just like, mean women in general. You yeah. Know? Some of them need to step. I'm their just game saying up. like the difference between men and women. Like when you see like you see Predator, you're just like, 
I'm doing some push-ups. Well, like, I'm going to yeah. wait till it, everyone it, leaves it, the room. It, it, it could oh, be yeah. But I'm going to go take a leak. And I'm going to do push-ups in this bathroom. About, I'm going to knock out 20 before I come back out. Yeah, before I come back that, out. That or you can be like, all right, aliens, these guys, this shit's fake. I'm going to eat me some tacos. I mean, it could be literally you take the adverse effect of it, too. You can just flip it on a coin and just say, you know what? Well, ah, fuck that. Yeah. That's not real. Yeah, regardless I'm, just saying, effect, I'm just saying you're seeing big-ass dudes. Like, the dudes are literally yeah. that muscular. I mean, they're... They, yeah, that part's not fake. Right. Like, but I could, That may be actually true, but I'm not going to tell myself that. Yeah, I'm telling myself that. I'm gonna lie to myself. I'm telling myself <laughs> I need to be able to hold a Gatling gun and spray thousands of rounds into brush. Yeah, I need to be at that level. Yeah. What if we were like that though with movies? Like, like sometimes women will be like, you know, like we were like, you don't even be watching that movie with those with those uh, men with their shirts off and. <laughs> yeah, we don't do that at all. Like you see that like oh, no. like luckily like we were our time was like after Baywatch. Oh, yeah. But can you imagine like our wives were watching Baywatch? You'd be like, fuck, man. And you'd be yeah. like in the bathroom, like, like fucking just Well, like, the new Baywatch has the rock in it. That's not, like, I can't even, there's no way I can, can't do uh, enough push ups to compete with the rock. No. Uh, uh, Efron or you something. Gotta, I never watched it, but I mean, I. You gotta, it. you gotta get a sponsor, dude. I can't do enough no. push ups. No, there's no way you're gonna beat the rock. I mean, you just gotta concede to that. Anyways, I'm moving on past this guy. He was stuck yeah. in a grease vent. Who gives a fuck? Um, Wait, how did he get out? Uh, we he, need to know how he got out. He got arrested. The, they, he got arrested? He was trying to rob the place. He was trying to... He was a By Chinese sneaking restaurant. in through the grease vent? He saw the grease vent was a way to get in. He thought it went that straight to the floor. Sense. And he just dropped in. But then it has a bend in it. He just got stuck. And he stayed there for two days before anybody knew he was there. Uh, where he was just like whispering, they're making burgers down below. He was like, please help me. It was a Chinese <laughs> restaurant. There's a lot of Asian stuff this in dude, this This dude's pretty fucking hard, though. If you can stay in a grease vent for two uh, days... That's just my old kind of... You know what? I'll tell you this. I think you could probably live in a grease vent longer than you can live in a lot of places. Because like, you're not going to starve to death, probably. You could just kind of like lick the side and, and get a little enough nourishment to stay. Probably so. But I, I mean, so. how fucked up... But like, What happens when it, it rains, though? I mean, I can only sit yeah. in this chair right here for like so long, and I'm going to start freaking the fuck out. Right. But if you were to like, you know, really focus your energy. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. I'm focusing pretty hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I've got, uh, I was going to show this video where the Texas Longhorn mascot charged the Georgia Bulldogs mascot. Oh, Did y'all I saw see that? a little bit of that. Yeah. It's not a lot of story here. It's just that the Texas Longhorn mascot and the, is, a, is a fucking Longhorn bull. It's a literal bull. Yeah, it's a literal bull. And the not ma- a man dressed I'm up as a bull. It's right. an and actual bull. The mascot for the uh, I will I will play this for you, Levi. And the mascot for the Georgia Bulldogs is actual bull. Is an actual yeah. bulldog. Yeah, I didn't and know and that. somebody thought like good idea to get these two together Ladies for a yeah. for a photo shoot. This is like a man walking on the moon. <laughs> Never for oh, 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 The bull. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, oh, the bull was like Levo. fuck this bitch. <laughs> It's a bull Can versus a bulldog. Look at him. That's a Maybe big that fucking bull, too, idea, man. But we don't care. Can we get a replay on that? Can we get a replay? Oh. Wow. That's targeting. Is that targeting? I've seen a lot of things. It was worth it. That's tar- that, it was worth tar- it. Tar- targeting is one of the stupidest fouls in God. college football. I don't even know I what that is. Yeah. It. It's like he was intentionally trying to hurt him. He did that on purpose. That's oh. literally what it is. Really? Oh, is, is, is him. No, he did that on purpose. That's exactly what targeting is. So anyways, is. I thought that was kind of just crazy. Whoever's idea that was, was a bad idea. But the last one, what I want to end with is my personal favorite today. And I, I think this was designed for us. Oh shit! I'm so excited. I'm gonna tell y'all that. I'm telling you, I'm so went like 180. I so went from hating these to like now, like I'm it. literally excited. Okay, you're gonna love this. So this is a town, uh, Cuts Town is is the name of a town in Pennsylvania, and this is a Facebook post from their their uh, police department. Okay. Okay. Is this a small town? Is this? Yeah, I mean it's relatively small. But okay. but listen to this. And this tell me if this is not an invitation for the Whiskey Bros. The Cutstown Police Department is looking for three volunteers to assist us in training officers to administer standardized field sobriety tests during suspect, suspected DUI traffic stops. The volunteers must be available on April 4th, 2019 between 2:30 p.m. and 7 p.m. Alcohol will be provided. Right. However, you will not receive any compensation for your time. In order to be eligible, you must be um, meet the below criteria. Be in good health between the ages of 25 and 40 with no history of drug or alcohol abuse. 
clean criminal history, be willing to drink hard liquor to the point of inebriation, sign a waiver releasing the borough of Cutstown of any liability, and have a sober, responsible party take care and control after the training. Interested individuals should contact Chief Craig Summers during normal business hours, and it gives his phone number and his extension. Oh my God, we should do this. Dude, dude, no, no, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna say they do this in Nashville. Really? I know for a fact they do this in Nashville. Yes. Can we and do it, this? Yeah, can, we should do. This. I don't know. I don't know like what the thing is. It's all about um, like able teaching to you properly. and teaching the officers like what is drunk and what is too drunk. But yeah, like you have to. You can show up. And yeah, you got to drink. I th- I think they provide the alcohol. I'm not sure, Sounds but you like ha- yeah, that's what this you said. have to you have to have a sober like driver to get you. Well, no, the thing is they will take you home, but we don't live in the metro area, so we would have to provide our own. They can driver. just take me to a car, and I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> just take me to the car on the outskirts. I'm gonna sleep it off there, a hundred percent, and. Just make sure I have my keys, but take, I'm not going to start the car up I would, until I would, the next morning. I would morning. just tell him to throw me in solitary confinement, and we'll just kind of get Take me to Waffle House, son. No, but th- this, this, house this happens there. in Nashville. I know for a fact this happens oh in Nashville. Oh, my God, dude. Um, and, you, and you can do it. And, like, I've said, like, I want to do this. Yeah. Um, And then I just didn't ever follow up on it. This was way before the Whiskey Bros podcast. This. this is way this is probably before I was ever married. Like, this is a long time ago. Damn. But, son. yeah, like, like this shit happens locally. Or it did. I don't know if it still nice. does or not. Nice. We got to do this. Yeah, I think that's the. Uh, I can that, look that should into be it. like our New Year's resolution. Uh, <laughs> I can, is to uh, be a case study for I can, uh, for alcoholics uh, everywhere. No, because we'll be the, we'll be the three motherfuckers. Everybody's gonna be like over on the side puking, and we're just gonna be sitting no. there being like, "So hey. TJ's got some tales <laughs> no, from the no, guano. Do you no, see this guy dude, that was like dude. fucking it, stuck no, no, in no, a no, grease no. trap? I, even better than that no. is is we should uh, tell the cops, hey. We agree to this as long as you let us shoot a podcast episode directly after. Oh yeah, in I don't the, think police, it, I don't the, think poli- the police, the police, the police. From from hey, what what I understand, this we could probably shoot a podcast during it. They're That'd pretty low great. key with it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Can you could you imagine shooting this? From I mean, a jail cell. From That'd what I hear, you great. basically go to their area, whatever it is. I'm assuming it's one of the precincts. Get and drunk you, and role play. You just fucking drink and have fun, and then it's like. It's supposed to teach you, but I think it really is supposed to teach them. Like they got like a breathalyzer there, like That's like funny. fucking hitting you with it to like let you know what's going on. So I mean, I don't know like the whole process, but I, I complete the thing is I completely forgot about this till you just brought yeah. it up. Like I, I, it was easily a decade ago when I That's heard about hilarious. this. I read that and I thought they're looking for three guys to just get drunk. That feels like it's us. Yeah, we'd do this. Uh, that yeah, would be we'd totally absolutely cool. do this. So that was what I had for. Tales of the Guano. Not bad. No, Not I'm, bad. Sad. I'm sad. Good, good I'm sad. I'm sad that it's over. Well, hey, I just I, I'm like I want, I want some more things there. Now that I feel like I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> now you're now you're breaking out your like legit well, like old school notebook. Well, no, I, I'd wrote I'd that's ri- that's wrote in print. I'd written, written down a couple print. things. One thing I wrote I, I'd written down because I knew I'd forget this, and I'm glad I'm bringing it up. Have you guys heard that Brian Cranston? Uh, it got cast as a quadriplegic in, a, in something. In yeah, in that movie with uh, what's his name, the the comedian, the short black comedian, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah. yeah I so I that. read an opinion piece yeah. on this and uh, and on CNN or something like that where they were uh, they were giving him shit because they were like, there are yeah, handicapped actors oh, and I actresses hate that, shit. that could have had this role and you're taking it from them. I hate that shit. And, That's uh, pissing me off so and much. His, and his kind of response was something like, well, hey, you know, I'm... They're not I'm, as good an actors as me, so fuck them. Well, well that one, that's what he should have said, because that's the truth. But what he said was something like, you know, uh, if I could only play roles that are me, I'd only, you know, I'd only be like a Caucasian man. A fucking a bit, nerd, you know? yeah. Like, I'd be, I'd be one thing. I could he never certainly be wouldn't be selling meth and being a fucking high school chemistry right. teacher. Right, and it just and pissed. being a fucking all around badass that he right. was in Breaking Bad. It just pissed and, me off. And him yeah. and and uh, Malcolm in the middle. Jesus, like was he not one of the best yeah. characters in that whole yeah. show? He was. It was great. Yeah, that was a great show. It, it blows me away. They expect him to. Well, that, that they want to give that role to a less good actor just because they have no arms. Well, I forget <laughs> who it was. Like, uh, it was another. Th- I, I don't remember the movie, but like they lost their shit because it was a. Uh, it was a transgender role, and they give it to someone who wasn't actually transgender. 
I bet it was the uh, like, it was the it was the uh, Dallas Buyers Club, wasn't it? I remember yeah, that. I had, too. I, yeah, honestly I honestly have yeah. no idea. Yeah. If you said it, I, I would probably still not know. Because yeah, I think it was uh, the Jared, controversy over Jared, Jared Leto, Leto who played it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Jared Leto. Oh. Yeah, he seems like he would almost oh, be poor. transgender, anyways. But he like everything I ever read about him, like he's just a fucking piece of shit, man. Oh, really? Yeah, like everyone, like if if you get into like any comment section on him, it's like, yeah, I met him once. He was a fucking asshole. Really? Yes, yes. Everyone like hates him, man. And even like it's starting to seem more like you know he played the Joker on like Suicide Squad. Right. It seemed like he was like getting really into it, like doing like crazy shit. Okay. And it seemed like he was getting on everybody's fucking nerves on the set. Even like, there. Like yeah. yeah, like stop, like stop being a fucking moron, man. Like, you're not really the Joker. Yeah, you're not really the Joker, and we don't. We don't we don't need pictures of dead babies in our text inbox. Like okay. I, I'm not saying I don't know if that's literally what he did, but he was doing fucked up shit. And yeah, I mean, acting, acting is a weird role, you know. Well, he was trying to be anyways. he was trying to be Daniel Day Lewis, and he just ended up coming off like a fucking asshole. Is, yeah, is uh, what happened. That's that's too bad. What happened? Sorry, and, uh, I just bumped it. Oh. No, Levi's getting pissed, and he was like shadow boxing his mic. And, and punched it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this mic, bitch. <laughs> no, uh, you know, uh, in the Tales of Guano, you brought up like a couple news reports and we we're talking about uh, uh, different news articles. Right. Uh, so I, I was uh, uh, pulled up my, just like restarted my computer at work and they pulled up like an article about uh, the movie Bird Box and me and Chad had kind of briefly discussed yeah. uh, the I movie. I should have watched that before this. Thought. But I, I'm not, not to spoil it, uh, but there is like a scene where they're, I mean, they're you've seen where they're like blindfolded yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. So there's I'll a, watch the trailer. There, there's, so. a, there's a point. Uh, oh, so you did see the trailer. I did so see the They're trailer. driving a vehicle that's, all the windows are blocked right. out. I saw that. So apparently in real life, p- teenagers and, I'm shaking and my head right now. I'm ha- just... Have, have tried to do the bird box challenge is what they call it. Okay. Driving through their neighborhood with all the windows blacked out with the blindfold on. <laughs> what? And, Hold on. I just want to interject here by saying that was the worst part of the entire movie. It was. It really? was. Like, I was watching that going, this is so fucking stupid. Like, I was about done with it right there. Like, Why do teenagers put challenge on the end of everything, though? They'll yeah, just no. do anything because you get, and, and you get it clicks. It's like the Tide Pod thing. Like, oh, one kid ate a Tide Pod. Now it's like, oh, it's a challenge. You got to do it too, bro. The Tide Pod challenge. But, but continue on with what you're doing. But talking anyways, about. Uh, so there's been like a couple fatalities throughout the United States since this movie. Been because people were trying to literally drive blindfolded. Drive blindfolded. It's, it's so, so stupid, it's, man. Like in the movie, like it's so dumb. It's yeah. so st- like. It's it's the worst part of the entire like it is. people bitch about the movie because people are going to pick apart anything as popular. Well, a lot of right. people say it was the happening, just well. That's different. what I said. That's I said thought, it, it I was a better version of the happening. It was. You take that movie and you're like, let's let's take this concept and make it an better. actual good movie. Yeah, make it a little bit better. And yeah. it's the it, happening trailer looked like it was going to be. A well, that's what I'll say. Trailer. That's what I'll say is better about the happening than Bird Box is the the directing of like the scenes. Okay. The the M Night Shyamalan is the the best, the best at directing yeah. these scenes. Yeah, He's exactly. the best, and and Bird Box doesn't compare to that at all. Right. The suspense and the camera angles and the and the he, lead up to the scenes. He is not nails the same. it. He nails it. But as far as besides that, the story and the characters the and concept, everything else, everything, yeah. everything else is better in Bird Box. Every mm-hmm. single thing else is better. But but Shyamalan, that's. I mean, I know y'all heard me talk about this. Shemalama ding dong. Yeah, shemalama lama 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 ding dong. He, <laughs> he's the fucking best. He's the, like like that damn lady in the water movie. Like uh, it was a fucking the worst movie ever. But that one scene that was hot garbage. Where they're where they're up against like the door and you can see whatever that demon dog thing that was is. Crazy. The monkey the, thing. Yeah. And yeah. it's coming in and it like busts through. It's like, like a wolf or something. Yeah, something like that. Like that was the best scene of the whole thing. And if you just watch that scene. In no part of the entire movie, yeah, you would be like throwing down money to see this movie. Fuck yeah, yeah. I saw it in theater, but, and yeah. I was yeah. Well, I went with you. I was there. Oh, we were all there. It was a th- we were all there. I can't even remember who was with me for things. But, so I'm uh, well, sorry. I, no, I, no, I was, no, no, no. We weren't all there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I took, went with your family. Your parents were even. No, there. you're okay. right. You're right. Was, I, wasn't, I was highly disappointed. I was not very, there. I, I took I took my wife oh, on our second ever date. That's right. You did say. I've that. heard because, the story. That's yes, funny. Yes, because I was like, what did she say? New M Night Shyamalan movie. She hated it, and I hated it, and I think if I hadn't expressed my hatred of it. 
we would not be together yeah, right now. Like, well, he likes really be like, shitty movies. She'd be like, this guy likes this movie? And, There's and no still, way. There's no way I'm being with this motherfucker. I, I, still, I still think it's probably one of the worst movies I've... It's honestly the worst movie I've seen at theater, for sure. There's no competition No, it's not that. the worst movie. I saw Lady... No. No, I take that back. I, I actually take this completely back. I think I saw... Um, I saw that movie with y'all. I, Lady in the Water was the second movie I saw with my wife. That's what we're talking about is Lady in the Water. Not The Happening, though. The Happening I saw with y'all. Okay, oh. we weren't talking about The Happening. Just we're talking now. about, we're Lady, talking about in Lady in the Water. Right. Okay. Right. I'm just trying to like, oh, okay, clear, okay, clarify. Okay. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha. I think I said it wrong earlier. Gotcha, I, I, gotcha. I took my wife to see Lady in the Water. Right. The I happening, saw The saw Happening us. with you two. Okay. The, the, I, I actually didn't hate The Happening yeah, as much it, as you did. It was did. tolerable. I didn't hate it. It was tolerable. I it was just, like, when I left Lady in the Water, I hated it. it was when just I left The, the Happening, I was like, eh, it's kind of weak ending to it a yeah. little bit. Well, it was well, a weak story. It was, it was a weak, weak yeah. everything. Yeah, when they, when, they the said, only, when they said it was like the Earth trying to, and the, it was something yeah, in the, the air, the plants trying to come I was just like, all right. Yeah, the only positive to The Happening was the visuals, which is M. Light Shyamalan's strong What about that guy that was really obsessed with hot dogs in The Happening? Wow. He was like, hot, hot. the guy said, dude, it was, it was, dude, the I blocked guy, so much of this. The guy that owned the, gr- the greenhouse, oh. and he was like, hot dogs get a bad rap. They got a neat shape. They're delicious. Yeah. He just right. kept going yeah, on about hot dogs. Well, and in my show, has got this weird thing. Like, I, I, first thing I thought what you were about to say was about uh, Lady, oh, Lady Water. Oh, Lady Water. Dude who worked out the one side of his yeah. body. He only worked out the right side of his body, left the left was side. Was that Lee Guzamo who did that role? In that movie? No, no, no. Leguizamo was the the straight man for that character. For that, movie. I can't. I just remember Lady in the Water being like a terrible D and D campaign that came was. to life. Yeah, well, and, and, exactly and Lady in the Water. If you took that movie and you like literally tried to explain the movie to somebody, it's impossible to explain the story plot of that movie. Because it was like, hey, there's like a mermaid who still, appeared out of a swimming pool, and there's these demon monkeys trying to get her, I, and I a great st- eagle is going to come and swoop her and take her away. And I'm just like, man, you sound fucking retarded. I still just don't know how M. Night Shyamalan hasn't been like, let somebody that knows how to write a story write a story, and let him direct it. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what happened with Sixth Sense. Yeah. Really? Someone else wrote that? Yeah. Like, well, it was co-written. Okay. So, okay. you know, like, somebody come in there and, like, did it. But it was like directed fantastically, and and the thing is with like all his movies, every yeah. movie, and think about what what was the what was the one the village, yeah, the directing that in movie. that, but I the hated that but movie. the directing the visuals, the visuals of the, like the monsters and the things was amazing. Oh, the story there, there's was there's not just many so scenes better than when shitty, though. than when she drops down over that over that fence into that road like that scene it's so good but it's, it was right. I, it's I, like, so, so good. good it's such a good twist I, like, I, like it was very powerful but also very disappointing to me it's it, he just needs someone else to write it for it, him but i do agree with you like like you're just like i, I th- that that point like it just took my that scene took my breath away because it was like what what the fuck am i watching now right. and now right. you're just like whoa this is like I, I, I'm just it. telling, if you could have had the script for Bird Box and had M. Night Shyamalan direct it, it yeah, would be one great. of the most popular movies ever to exist. Yeah. Okay. Ever. Like, because his, his, the way he shoots his scenes and the way the lines are delivered and the way he does it is fucking amazing. It's just the story right. is always so goddamn stupid. Yeah. Oh, no, what like about Devil? Get over it. I, did he write I never watched or just direct it? I never watched it. Did you see Devil? Yeah, I saw Devil. I, yeah. I liked Devil. For a movie that took place mostly in an elevator, I thought it was a good movie. I still uh, say the story was so fucking stupid. It was weak that it was actually... It was so dumb. Was and you the, got this guy. you got this guy that's like, that's whatever, on their maintenance team that was like, I know what this is. This is this is fucking Satan. Yeah. This is fucking Satan, and he's. I know what he does. He comes in, and he takes over people, and he and he kills for, everyone. Like I kind of forgot like, about that. He's like laying out the entire story. I kind of forgot about and that. And we're not. We're gonna. Oh shit! I just hit the springs on this thing. We're gonna forget that everyone in this movie forgot how elevators work. Yeah. It was like, oh, this elevator stuck on this floor. Let's go to the entire penthouse, and fucking. Uh, rappel down because we can't go one floor above and just fucking open up the doors I and, and go I in that way. I think of all this. It, it was so dumb. I so remember, dumb. I remember just enjoying I, the movie. I, yeah, <laughs> but no, I've, seen, I've seen Die Hard enough to know but, that you could do that. But you're right. Shoot, that's I have to do that shit for my job. I mean, every every if you look at every single elevator door, there's a hole in it. There's a hole in it, and that's okay. so you can put a key in there and open up the door <laughs> to get in. Oh shit. Yeah. Breaking, breaking it down. Elevator openings for us. Yeah, it's not that. You work like, on elevators a lot. Yeah, yeah, because they got a they got a recall for fire alarm. So like, 
they, there's always like shit in the pit and in the top of the shaft, and they got to recall to a certain shaft. floor. You know a lot about the, the top of the shaft, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I can teach no. you all boys about the top of the shaft. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys are talking about M. Night Shyamalan movies. Now, Shyamalan, my ding dong. Now, y'all, y'all saw both, de- saw both Saw Devil. I never saw it. Did you yeah. ever see The Last Airbender? No. No. No, I think I think I was out by that point. Well, that la- was the based off the cartoon, wasn't the, it? That, the cartoon Avatar, which is a great cartoon, honestly. For Sidebar, kids. before you get into this, I like The Last Style Bender, who is a, a I don't know great that MMA fighter. That's his nickname, The Last Style Bender, Israel right. Arasanya. He's going to fight uh, Anderson Silva next, so. I, Table I, that. Honestly, Wait, okay. <laughs> okay. That's a whole different conversation. Yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> pin that. Levi, you tell us <laughs> Go back this. to Levi. With, with the Shyamalan thing, how excited are you guys about the movie Glass? I'm actually I'm pretty super excited about stoked, it. Stoked about it. I saw. I saw. Did you see Split yet? No, no. I didn't even know Split was it. I saw Unbreakable in a theater, and I haven't I, seen Unbreakable since then. I've and I didn't even know Split was. Anything even worth Dude, watching? Go watch Split. Split Split's good, better than Unbreakable. But I didn't I think. like Unbreakable oh, for sure. For sure, honestly, it is. I thought Unbreakable the same thing. The visuals were good. The writing was so fucking stupid. It was slow. It Such was slow. And I mean, movie. and understand, understand, uh, for people that don't remember, I Unbreakable didn't... come out right after The Sixth Sense. Right. Yeah. So I was hyped as fuck to watch Unbreakable. Right. right. Yeah. Now, and it was a letdown because uh, I remember when I first I watched like, it. I feel like the ending was the only thing that saved that movie for me. Yeah. I thought the ending was great. Well, I thought that like it was such a slow movie. The Shamalama like, Lama 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 twist. I was sitting there thinking like. <laughs> Man, if they make a sequel to this, there's a lot of potential with this. Right. And then when Split came out, somebody told me... I had no clue it was a, a sequel. So, someone told, no clue no, it was in the no, same no, y'all, can, y'all can straight up spoil this shit because no, I'm well, not going to well, watch it. Well, no, it. no. Well, they, they, they kind of show you at the very end and they tie it back in and you're just like, yeah. oh, damn, this is in the same world. And then I'll show, it shows Samuel Jackson in his wheelchair talking about different stuff and you're just like, right. oh, damn. So, this so the is movie has nothing to do, nothing totally to separate. do with that so what's until the, the very last right, scene. The concept is, is James McAvoy... Wait, is, who's that? Uh, know that he's actor? the guy who plays uh, Charles Xavier in the young oh, X Men. Oh, oh, uh, oh, the guy in Wanted. Wanted, yes, yeah. correct. So yeah, oh, he's a great. He, he's actor. a maker, and he's great. Oh, he's great. That, Wait, and, so and, he's going to be in the new one? In Split, yeah. in Split, he does a, a absolutely incredible job. Like uh, to me, uh, you split, know, Gold I'm, a little, I'm a little more in on this because I, I like him. I mean, it's he should got a fucking Oscar That's what split for it. Is. But, Wait, but his superpower is he has split personalities. He has terrible. He has 35 different split personalities within his one person but he has one personality that's that inside is. him that is called the beast yeah. and with that same personality he's convinced himself that he has supernatural and human abilities he starts crawling the wall starts bending steel and yeah, breaking all shit and eats alert. people wait so he doesn't literally have these powers he no, just he like does. his mind over no, he matter does. makes he, it happen he, he convinces himself it happen, I guess. He, 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 he that believed, wasn't explained really he, he has so much to, uh, like he takes on M. Night Shyamalan yeah, a lot right yeah. he takes on but these personalities cool. and takes them on so intently but when he takes on the form of the beast, like literally, all of a sudden he's like super strong, and I mean climbing walls like fucking Spider Man. And next thing you know, he's abducted these girls. There's these three girls in the basement. Whoa. Well, don't, don't tell me I was anymore. so I was so into this until you're talking about he's abducting well, people. Well, here's the thing. Well, one of his personalities. Here, here's the did. thing. You don't know. You don't know all. All the other personalities get revealed through most of the movie, and they're all terrified of this one personality, and it's not revealed till. To the, the end. end, so it's a build up to that. That's what yeah. makes it so yeah. fucking sad. All of a sudden, he, all of a sudden, he's like a like a thirteen year old boy person. He's like, "Hello, my name's Dewey," wait, and he's all like, "Are y'all saying this is a good movie?" I enjoyed it, dude. It is a fantastic movie. I enjoyed it's, it. It's a fantastic like it's lit, like like it's like, slow. you don't know who directed it. Well, and who I'm wrote building it. It's up. a good movie. I had zero expectation going into this movie, and when I watched it and I finished it, I was like, "Damn, that, that was a good movie." Because James McAvoy, kind of like uh, I do he, think he's a fantastic kind of like Heath Ledger. He takes on these each personality so well, and you're just like, oh man, what personality is going to come out next? Because I, it's kind of like TJ said, I'm kind of spoiling a little bit too much uh, up front. It's okay. But, I, but I, I've the, had the, zero intention the, the way, of the, this the, movie, way so. the way of the movie starts is there's these three girls kidnapped in this weird room, locked up with each other, and then next thing you know. Uh, James McAvoy comes dressed up in women's clothes. And he, Hello, I'm Penelope. Oh and, shit, and, I'm kind of into this and, now. And, 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 and they're, they're they're just like, what the fuck? Where are we? And he said, I'll bring you food. And uh, and he said, uh, James will bring you food here in a minute. Next thing you know, another personality comes in. Hi, I'm James. I'm the I'm it's the, the same dude, dude same in? fucking dude. Yeah. All right, I'm kind of in on dude. this now. And this I mean, sounds like a really I mean, he's complete fucking psycho. But then as it goes on, like you said, it reveals that you know there's an even darker, deeper side. Yeah. And he has a personality where he's so convinced that he's this person called the beast that, I mean, literally he has superhuman strength and all this other kind of stuff. And the movie glass is 
uh, taking it where James McAvoy is caught by the police. They have Bruce Willis already caught by the police and Samuel Jackson in this psych ward where they're all together. Uh, Bruce Willis believes he's a superhero. But wait, Sam, Sam, La- Sam Jackson is just really smart, right? Like, yeah. that's his only he's power. The, he's the yeah. world's smartest IQ, but it has a, a body made out of glass. And then you have James right. McAvoy, who has a million different personalities, but has one personality where he has superhuman strength and, like, he's an ultimate supervillain. Yeah. So the concept of the movie Glass is that Samuel Jackson is going to manipulate the person with the multiple personalities. Hey, it's time to unleash the beast, and you're going to kill Bruce Willis. And they're going to go into a super bout against each other. All right, I'm kind of in on this then. Yeah, this yeah. does sound. So this does sound really good. They're not really combined in in the movie in the movie Split until the very end, and it's it really just it foreshadowing together. for the next one. So there are two separate movies that are tied together for the next movie. Really? Okay. Movie. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. See, so yeah. this is all, and that's all, all the new. trailer is. Is this psychiatrist is in a room? With uh, Samuel Jackson, uh, the guy with the split personality, Bruce Willis, you believe you're a superhero with superhuman strength. You believe you're the world's smartest man. You have an ultra high IQ, but your body's made of glass. And you're a guy with split personalities who believes that he can bend still and climb walls and 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 like the ultimate supervillain. And he and he's just like, but all of that's a lie. And then the movie kind of. I watch this. Sh- I watch this shit though, for yeah. sure. It looks awesome to me. I will watch it. It does sound good. But definitely watch that movie because it. Like James McAvoy, I seriously in that movie was fantastic. I do like I do like him. Like I mean, I've only seen a handful of movies him in it, but he's always fantastic. It's good. Yeah, in all the things that he's it. done. Hey, I was gonna ask you, Chad. Um, yes, sir. I know we're I know we're no, we're, you're good, we're man. Getting close here, but the um, uh, did you hear about? And this is a terrible story about the the 13 year old girl who who was taken and kept for three months, and uh, the guy killed her parents. Oh yeah, yeah, I did hear. Okay. Yeah. I've not heard a lot about this. So, so Levi, th- this um, this twenty one year old guy sees this thirteen year old girl get off the school bus one day, and he and he decides right then he's going to take her. And he comes to the house apparently a couple times, and there's but, too many but people. But hold around. on, no, no like the the story that like we knew is this uh, person parents are dead, kids are gone. That's it. That's all we knew of the story for like right. months. Right. Like that, that's it. So yeah, then then right. like we just recently found out like the actual story. Right, you're right, right. Because because the uh, the yeah. So but but for what but I my thing ask my is, thing was is I was like, all right, kids involved in it somehow. Right. What happened was though is this guy seen this girl said he's gonna take her. He um he comes several times and there's too many people around. He comes one night. The daughter apparently comes out and says. You know, I, I hear the dog barking outside, and there's a car coming up our driveway. And the mom's like, all right, well, you, me and you go in here in the bathroom. Dad's going to look into it. Dad goes, don't even open the door. He's, like, at the window looking out. And this dude shoots the dad through the freaking window and kills him. Wow. Yeah. Right there. So he's just looking out the window and gets killed. Okay. Yeah. This guy kicks in the door, holds a gun to the mom's head, and makes her No, the, the mom and the daughter, like, they knew shit was up, right? They went to, like, the bathroom, the bathroom or something right, and hit. Right, right. Yeah. But he comes in there, and he, and he eventually right. holds a gun to her head, makes her tape up the daughter's mouth and arms, and then he shoots the mom right in front of her and kidnaps her and keeps her in his house for, like, three months. Now, I don't know that he that he raped her because when I looked at the charges, he wasn't charged with rape. Uh, sure. Um so, so I guess it's kidnapping, murder, all that kind of stuff. I didn't see any kind of rape or anything yeah. like that. But my only question is, like, how do you even defend against that looking out your window? How do you even defend against that? Oh, you're asking From, me well, because I mean, I've done the stuff? Because you, you kind of think a lot about self-defense and defending your home more than probably either of us do. Well, the 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 thing that I've been trained in um, that is, like, 50% of the time, it's just luck, man. Yeah. And if it's your day, it's your day. Right. And that guy getting shot through the window, that was his day, man. Right. It didn't yeah. matter. How much he could have done. I, it didn't matter. This motherfucker could have been special forces, could have been secret service, elite, elite. You can't stop somebody shooting you through the window that you can't even fucking see. I, I think right. the only thing he could have done in that whole scenario, and, and I don't blame him for going to the window. The first thing you want to do is look out and see what's going Assess the situation. It, the only thing that I could imagine that you could do is literally go lock the door and stay with your, well, your gun. Well, he house. looked out, but I mean, the thing is, like, you can say that, but who wants to live a life that way? Yeah. Where no, every time I'm, you I'm hear saying, a noise. I'm not, I'm not saying, but. We heard a noise. Let's lock the I whole fucking do house down. There's no like, way. No, I would have no probably left the house. house. I, and I'm not saying, I'm saying, like, for, for me, 
that would probably be the first response for a, a man to do is literally check it out, grab the gun, go see right. what the situation is. For a woman who's alone at the house, if it would just be the, the, the woman and her daughter, I think the first instant is lock the door, go hide somewhere. But the thing is, it's right? just it's just a noise. Like, yeah. you don't know shit. I mean, how many times do you hear noises? But Everybody they, hears but noises. they saw an actual vehicle coming up the driveway, is what I, what I heard. Now, you hear a vehicle coming up the driveway, but still, how yeah. many times? How right. many times? It's nothing. You know, it's I nothing. Don't know. It's I kind of a touch-and-go like, like, situation. It could, there's so many variables or different ways that you could approach there's, that. But there's so I don't know, many don't stories. Blame the guy. Like, like you, I you know, it's, it's, one right, them, it's one of them things that's hard, that's hard to say. Like, um, you know, is it right? To lock your doors and make that motherfucker come to the door while you hide us behind cover, not concealment, cover, and you hide there and talk to this person about what the fuck they want. Right. Yeah, that's right. You know, you're keeping your family safe. That's right. Who wants to live that way? Right. Not not that many people. Not that many people right. want to actually live that way. Yeah. That's... So it. You there, feel there's like you're a giving them some level there, of power almost. Well, it's, well, there's a line there. It's like it's like where do you want your line to be when you walk out in public? Do you want to walk out with a with a a knife? Do you want to walk out with a knife and medical like trauma gear, tourniquet? Do you want to walk out with a gun? Do you want to walk out with a gun and spare mags? Do you want to walk out with body armor? Do you want to walk out with a rifle? Do you want to you know like yeah. where's your line? Where's your line right. where it's How like prepared you it's like be. okay we're we're getting past the point of ridiculous here. Like right. we're getting past the point of I don't want to live this way. So the same thing is when somebody comes down your driveway, where's the point of like I don't want to live this way. I want to if someone comes on my driveway, I want to go talk to him. Right. And now you might get shot in the face right. like this guy did. You remember that story of my dad when, when somebody pulled down the driveway? Yeah. Yeah. And I, it was people trying to hide. Right. I was moved out, but that could have been really bad. But but uh, right. essentially. Right. He he really probably shouldn't have done that. I no. mean, it worked out well for him. Right. But I imagine those kids. So it was kids. Eventually, I don't know if you remember, but it was kids uh, trying to hide because the police, they thought, were trying to find them. Yeah. And so they pulled down the long driveway to the end, thinking they could they could be out of the way. And my dad seen it because he was going to the bathroom or something out there, and he went outside <laughs> and reached uh, and uh, reached in the car, grabbed their keys out of the ignition, and grabbed the dude's shirt and yanked him out of the car. <laughs> it was a teenager or something, right. but yeah. uh, and he scared well, the shit out of and him. And then I've I've told you all that story. I'm not gonna go like. I'm not going to go in detail about it, but where where we were out training and that like oh, yeah. shady car rolled up, right? And then uh, the guy the guy that was one of the guys that was training us, he walked up, he walked up to this car with like a rifle like in his hand. I'm like, and that was the thing. It was like it was weird to me. Like th- this this scene meant a lot to me because I was like, this guy's walking up to this people that are obviously lost with a fucking rifle in his hand, right? Like this is over the line, right? Like right. this is this is fucking over the line. Like these people are obviously lost, and this guy's walking up to him with a fucking AK in his hand, in his arms, and then he's walking up to him, and they roll down the window and say the most shady shit I've ever heard, and then continue to say shady shit, and then slowly drive away. And I'm like, I am Maybe really that, glad that yeah. guy had an AK right yeah. there because as soon as they said the first words, I was grabbing my rifle. And finding cover because I'm like, if they, if I hear like the first wrong thing, I'm lighting right. up the cab. Right. You, you thought like that's ridiculous until you realized that maybe it wasn't. Until it wasn't. Right. right. Until it wasn't. And so the same thing with like this guy, like, mm. like uh, talking to somebody through the window, like a lot of people say that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, just fucking open up the door and talk to your people. Yeah. Well, this guy got shot got through shot the through head. The that's what stood out to me. Well, I, of the whole story, it was all terrible, but that stood out to me. I was like, dude, that guy just looked out the window and got killed. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I kind of feel like it, it's just a different mentality altogether. It's based 100% on personality and, and personal experience that de- uh, that determines the outcome of what you're going to do in that in that right. moment and in instance. I mean, like, like you've been you've been trained, you kind of you kind of have more of a, a like to me, I would think that you would handle that situation more aggressively uh, than I would. Well, it's it, more methodical. It, it, it depends, sure. though. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say, like, I, I definitely want to come across as, like, some kind of pro. I mean, I'm amateur as amateur. Yeah. But it, it's it still just comes down to the person and, like, what you're willing well, I, to do. Like, what, what do you... You know, like, you think about any any shooting, any church shooting, any school shooting... Like who in that school wouldn't want to have a rifle that day? 
Right. Well, I, but who's going to bring a rifle to school every day? Right. Who's right. going to bring a rifle to church every day? Right. right. Well, I just think there's like a thousand different variables. I mean, like, so say a person had like a shitty day at work or, or whatever, and all of a sudden they're at home. Somebody's pulling up their fucking driveway. They've had enough bullshit for the day, and they're just like, "Who's this motherfucker?" And just right. go out and and uh, first thing they want to do That's is go me. out the Fuck door. In the neck, uh, like, son. what the fuck you gonna do? What are you doing down my driveway? And come out and instantly get shot. And there may be some person who's had a really good day and just like, man, well, like I ain't doing that uh, that bullshit. I'm gonna go cut the movie on, cut the volume. I'm just gonna sit in my in my chair, relax. It's fucking bullshit. They'll turn around. I ain't gonna worry about that shit. Yeah. There's there's people who just take a different approach right. to it altogether. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I will say my my personal way though. Take take whatever you will. But I mean, if you ring my doorbell and I'm not expecting you there, when I answer the door, there is a gun in my hand. Right. And it's it's there is it's ready to fire, and but it's not pointed. Zero. Yeah. It's behind me. It's not pointed at anybody. It's you know. It's in it's in covert ready right. as they call it. I mean, it's. You know, and and a hundred percent of the time, it has not been needed. Yeah, but all it takes is one time to ruin your life. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. So a few years ago, we were gonna we were giving like Christmas uh, tins of cookies uh, like unannounced to neighbors, and the sun had just set, but it was still early. It was like the sun setting in the winter, and I went to like three neighbors <laughs> of the family to give uh, bless you to Thank give you. Uh, cookies out, and uh, it was in the country, but three. <laughs> Three neighbors, two of them came to the door with guns in their hand. Yeah. I was like, these motherfuckers are ready for some shit, son. Yeah, because who's coming to their house? <laughs> I mean, the sun had just set. It wasn't like yeah. it was late at night. Yeah. But still, hey, man, they're ready. They put it away since they saw it was I'm a neighbor. The, I'm I'm the same way, man, because it's just, you know, you, you're not going to need it. There's like a 99.9999999% chance yeah. you're not going to need it. Right. But if that one zero zero one percent chance hits... That changes your entire life. Right. Bless you again. That changes Sorry. everything. Damn, Levi. Here, Levi, what are you allergic to, man? You allergic to us? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he, that means I am, but I'm fighting through it. Dude, Look. I'm enjoying this whiskey with you boys. It's pretty good. I actually enjoy it. I'm it's, enjoying just be, you know just drinking with you boys. Oh yeah, we hadn't had one of these in a while. Where are we at on our time here? We, uh, we're, we're we're probably we probably need to start thinking about doing a whiskey picks. Wow, are we still doing that? I feel like 2019 is like you, the year you don't, of not you don't like that. Picks. I hate that shit. Well, you don't have to do it's one. It's dumb. Like, why? Why are we doing a whiskey pick? Like, do you, what are, do you want to do them? You got one? Yeah. Why? Why? What? What are we talking about here? We've talked about everything. If it was well, worth uh, talking well, about, well, we would have already I, talked well, about I, it. I, I tell you one thing that they do it, uh, like not necessarily a podcast, but just uh, like uh, like hot ones or whatever. You ever watch that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. So, uh, what you got going on in your life? You know, what, what's something yeah, you want to get plug. there? It could be. Just or be I'm a like, plug, what's that? What's that? Whatever. Sports, you got, plug, what's you the do? sports guy that does the? Uh, what have you learned today? Yeah. Some, um, uh, Dan, Dan Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, Dan Patrick. That I think that's better than like picking some. I like. Uh, like I feel like if it was worth talking about. I would well, already talk about. You know, it. we didn't start out doing this. We started out having final thoughts, and then everyone ended yeah. up picking something, so we just changed it to whiskey pick. So is that true? Yeah. You go back to our first episodes. We said we didn't do a whiskey picks in the first episode. We called it final thoughts. Yeah, and right. then everybody picked something. Their final thought was a was a pick. Oh, okay. So that's how it evolved. If you remember, I feel like a final thought is better. Or what did you learn? Or so like I that like I like on meat eater. Steve Ranella has his people. Yeah, He'll say you, you got any concluders? <laughs> <laughs> concluders. Yeah, is there you got any that, concluders. Like that word. Yeah, it's, oh, nice. no, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. I don't I don't have anything. I, I prepared something in case we were really going to stick to this. I was going to recommend the innocent man. Uh, show on Netflix if you haven't watched it. It's a documentary. It, it's kind of like uh, Making a Murderer kind of thing. A lot like Making a Murderer. Similar. Uh, but this story was so <sighs> profound that John Grisham wrote his only uh, nonfiction book about this story. It seems like that's popped up. I feel like I've seen like some of this. Yeah. And uh, I just thought it was really entertaining, and, and, and it just really blows my mind how many uh, – seemingly innocent people will confess to some shit under the right circumstances. Cause I can't imagine me confessing to a murder under any circumstances no. that I didn't do. I can't imagine it, well, but you'll see people do it. I, I don't know if they're watched, weak oh, or yeah. what. Yeah. Uh, did you guys ever watch the second season of making a murder? Yeah. Yes. I watched, I watched yes, every, I watched I watched every, God, every, I every minute of it. So bad, but I can't All leave right, this conversation. Let's wrap it then. Are we wrapping it? Yeah. I feel like and making a murder season it. two is like worth talking about. Yeah. How wait, where, where, where are we at on time? We're past two hours. 
Okay. We got time if you want. If you want to get some final. All, all I know is that the <laughs> Brendan Dassey made it definitely. all the way to the Supreme Court, and that motherfucker is still in jail, and he's innocent. God, I know, and I hate that for that. Like and I that, hate it. That man. motherfucker. He's guilty of being retarded. That's he the only is. thing he's exactly. guilty of. Yeah, I right, agree with right. that. I yeah. don't think either one of them are, are guilty, but but goddamn. I don't know about the the the, th- the thing about um Stephen Avery. Stephen Avery is the thing if I can't he, get past with him is like the motive. Like, why the fuck would he kill someone? Yeah. Why would he kill her? Why would he kill anyone? But then why would he kill her? Like that's the thing I can't yeah. get past. Right. There's no motive. I think it's that it's that guy's name. Uh, uh, his cousin, brother, the brother-in-law. No, cousin, Brendan's person. brother with the uh, with the computer yeah. with all the fucked up shit. Yeah, on but it. but dude, when I'm at, you know what I'm gonna go with here. Go with the I'm fucked up go, shit we've looked at in our past yeah. too. Yeah, that's the thing. Like if that motherfucker's innocent, oh my god, there's not enough apologies in the planet. To, right. to apologize for them like exposing this dude's entire internet history, but but it's not Dude, like internet history. No, he downloaded he, he, that his, stuff to his, his hard drive. Internet history is like the most. But I mean, when I was in college, well, man, we, it was like find the most fucked, fucked up, up shit, shit and yeah. show it to I, everybody I in that. the room. I did that too, so I'm yeah. there with you. No, I'm not saying like maybe but, he was into it, but, but I'm just but, saying. But you take that, and that's not the only piece of evidence, but. But like he's the only one that can place the you know the the stepdad and the stepdad is the only one that we can speak to his whereabouts. Yeah, it is shady. And that it whole fire shady. went from being like a small fire to like a fire that was over the right. house. Yeah, like and a, they did testify against their own family, their which own is weird. Family, which is weird. Which they're living on the same well, land and, as their own well, family. There's so many different yeah. things. Like even the 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 bone remains. I feel like was the same level of char at. Three different burn sites. Right. So I, obviously it's scattered at some point. I feel I'm like, like if, if people haven't seen this, they have no idea what no, the fuck we're yeah, talking about still, right now. But I mean, go watch Making a Murderer. Watch an Innocent season Man. Two, yeah, watch season two. Stuff. And it, you, you're going to watch both of them, and you're still not going to know what's happening. Spoiler alert: you don't have any clue. Nah, we nah, don't. You need we, context. We have no you need idea what's going, context context what's going on here. What I mean, even know you're still you're going to go to bed and you're just being like, well, I don't know. Like, what? yeah. Anyways, and and it making murders being like, we don't know either. You fucking figure it out. That's right. I, oh. I stole that shit from uh, Tom Segura. So, Innocent Man, <laughs> what did you learn this week, Chad? Or, 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 or what do you think? What did about? I learn? What do you want to get out there? Oh, gosh, damn it. Um, I learned AI is not as far along as we thought it was. <laughs> Hi, I am the most advanced AI on yeah, the planet. The, the anchor looked <laughs> fantastic, uh, but the uh, the words were terrible maybe you had to hear it in Japanese. i learned uh i learned Chinese. levi has amazing handwriting even when he's trying to look like he has shitty handwriting yeah it's still better than like you're like top like 10 percent handwriting for sure dude uh, if, for if you sure. looked at my handwriting you would legitimately think that i was on the uh the spectrum for autism 100 percent, dude you your handwriting is still better than mine that's true <laughs> yes <laughs> I've learned that Texas makes way better whiskey than Colorado does. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I agree. It's sweeter than I thought. I thought Texas was going to be like it you know, sweet. hard. And, you know, it's sweeter, like it's sweeter than I like my whiskey. I, I would not continue to buy this, no. but it's it's still good. Like I'm, That's I'm a nice ladies' it. whiskey. Put a little Coke with it. and you'd Yeah, be, it'd be yeah. perfect. Like, you call no. me a lady? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> What'd you learn? Or uh, you uh, I'll tell you something interesting I did learn this week, and uh, we didn't bring it up in the in the podcast, was – that uh, I I got a an answer to an age old question. Uh, oh God! Was uh, uh, orange? What came first, the color or the fruit? Oh, I know this answer. Wait, can I pee now? Because I know this answer. Yes, I but I want you to confer when you come back. God, I need a pee you so bad. Go, go, go pee, go pee. But I feel like all right, because right. I feel like we're not going to wrap this up like soon. But I know the answer. To the, this. Co- the color came and first. And I was so, I was so happy. The color came first. Yes. Uh, so the first uh, recorded uh, oranges in history were actually green. They actually came from uh, like Thailand and Southeast Asia. It's a uh, form of uh, orange called a tangerine pomelo hybrid. And it in Vietnam and Thailand, the the climate and the culture, even a fully matured orange is green. Is actually green even Golly. today. And uh, the word came from I didn't an know Asia, this part. I didn't know the word, green part. Uh, Naranj. Which it translates in ancient Sanskrit, uh, which is Indian culture, to orange tree. Okay. So the oldest recorded history of the word orange is referring to a color. You're way too not smart for this podcast. God dang! But Levi, I, I love you, man. I, I I just had the cliff notes of that. I just had the fact that they named this fruit based off the color. That's kind of cool. Like that's the orange fruit. Yep. That's kind of cool. So they named it orange, and that apparently they didn't have carrots. It sucks in this for part people like you though. Yeah. That are- no, colorblind. I can tell orange, motherfucker. I mean, you what might. What color is just... stop sign? Red. 
Uh, I thought you were because gonna say I, orange. But. God damn it! I know. I, <laughs> even orange. if I even if I couldn't see it, I would be like a um um whatever condition. Condition. You've been no. trained. Yeah. Been trained. Anyways, I love you boys, and uh, cheers one more time. Cheers one more time. You yeah yeah, yeah. yeah with this Texas whiskey. Ow!